ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the main gaming one thousand dollar weekly series as always this is a free to join event with some of the top controller players we have uh in the world here we got a, a good range of players here um i'm very excited to be back here with my host uh co-host as always blitz five blitz what do you got to, to say to everyone here before we jump into some action Dude, absolutely. We're finally back for the first time in 2023 after kind of the winter break that we took ending the season of doing this in 2022. So very excited and debuting for the first time ever on Kick, the new platform uh, with a bunch of veteran teams and also veteran players and some new players. So I'm excited, Stenta. How about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I looked around uh, the roster we've got here tonight, so I've definitely noticed a couple a couple of powerhouses out there. Kinetic Seven, um, amongst absolutely. others, some familiar uh, faces out there with some new rosters. The Dub Hub, uh, we seem seem vigorous. Uh, we'll, we'll get in uh, involved with some Astro listen listen ins tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and hear some comms uh, during the action. But we've got five matches here, ready to roll. It's gonna be two Arangles, one Miramar, and then right back to two Arangles. And once again, we got $1,000 on the line. If you are just tuning in, if you are curious about joining the action, make sure that you take some time, follow the main gaming Discord and Twitter. All of our events are free to join and welcome for anybody. Um, but Blitz, that's enough talking here. We gotta get a little bit of action gear going quickly over to game one. Yeah, we already have the first plane path, which is going from Zarki all the way down to military base. And looks like we're getting a lot of early jumpers which is pretty unusual here for like the beginning spot being Zarki, but obviously there's always a couple teams that go in the Georgia Pole hospital area, classic move from AFI, which is Affinity, kind of classic team that's been playing together for a while there. I'm sure, I think they have one uh, new player on their squad, and we'll see where everybody else is landing tonight. Yeah, absolutely. As you said, Affinity, formerly known as Skyline, uh, they actually was originally known as Affinity, but they, they got kind of drafted by an organization called Skyline for a while, played in several of our leagues and in individual events. This is their patented exactly. drop. We're going to keep a big eye on them. We see Baby Joey, Zalodi, Omerta, um, all insane players. So we'll make sure we keep an eye on that team, one of our veteran teams out here. Uh, taking a look here, Blitz, you did say a lot of early droppers, but we've got a lot of late droppers too. If you look over towards Milta, some teams, uh, looks like the Weasels, uh, one of our new teams, ZG. I'm going to tell everyone, keep an eye on this Zodiac gaming squad. It looks like they're going mil, so they have um, quite the roster here. Tacticals, Linkadox, Paulo, Sam, all usually um, from different teams who have kind of formed a new team. So I think they've been doing very, um, interesting. very successful here uh, in the comp scene recently. I've been keeping a close eye on them, and if I'm looking towards the center of the map. A couple teams dropping in the shelter area blitz uh rr that's rico's roughnecks we've seen them in a lot of our weekly series events near vigorous mm -hmm. um vigorous again led by noxy there ghosted prodigy uh they've got a veteran squad we know what they're capable of and they're gonna love this first circle up yeah definitely one of the veteran squads it's so interesting as we get our first circle pop that is kind of where they're headed to the junkyard and museum there for vigorous but it really is interesting to see, you know, if you guys have been following PUBG or the console scene, you may know this, but some players have kind of walked away from the scene. Some players are still here. So it is cool to see some of the, the teammates or, or people that are still playing. You mentioned um, there's Quaveoff is here tonight, Aimbot, Warhawk, Tacticals, Linkadox. Oh, there's still a lot of big names here, Baby Joey and, and Zality. So uh, it's kind of cool to see that so many people are still here playing. So I'm excited. Yeah. Hey, the, the it is game is something that you know it kind of comes and goes for a lot of people and you know when there's some tournaments there to play for you know we see a lot of the veteran players and veteran teams reform rejoin and you know head out to battle here but um it's been a little bit of a, a winter hibernation here for us at main gaming um this is a test event for our official relaunch on april 17th so we'll have basically a one week break before we relaunch with our new website um, and a full calendar of dedicated events for everybody in the PUBG console community. So there is a lot to look forward to, whether you're a competitive player, a casual player, someone who just wants to get involved with some charity events. Um, we're going to have it all um, very accessible to everyone here. And again, taking a look at Noxie, having a look around the map here, he really is just going to love this first circle blitz. It's only RR that's on the south side of them. Um, everyone else is really spread amongst that south side of the main 
um the main piece of land here and, and, or as you said early droppers near george pool or just south of everest so lots of teams have a decent rotation ahead of them um and vigorous is, is really one of the only teams that's going to be sitting real comfortable in zone one yeah, and something where we kind of left off is Vigorous was a team that had sort of taken a break, then rejoined us for some of our Monday series here with the main gaming tournaments. Noxie had come back, and they were slowly kind of gaining momentum, but they often got caught getting killed early. So now that they have this center circle, they you know they they have the skill here. Will they come out with like an early dub or potential high score place there? And then also I'm look, kind of looking at the crazy mob their classic drop was always farm they're in the circle they're on the south side but depending on how the circle goes it's either going to go north or south here most likely they could be in for a while or they're going to have a tough rotation i mean this could be a zone that goes into yasnaya um that's so just we'll, the patented we'll uh, crazy mob drop though they're always at it farm is. you know we've always, seen some some classic time. farm endings with crazy mob just still holding down their drop spot so you, you love to see that early on you i, I don't know if they're gonna really take the time to extend out of farm right now they should be comfortable for a zone or two uh really depends what that first shift does um it looks like they're gonna stay there pretty comfortable from now uh team toxic uh led by boatman formerly part of the dub hub is leading uh the, the the txc squad along the dirt road to the center of the zone there just to the north side of crazy mob someone also to keep an eye on um as well zg starting their own rotation into these buildings that are very popular just to the uh, northeast side uh, of milta over here so again one of my teams to keep an eye on here ladies and gentlemen this zg squad with paulo sam tacticals linkadox i'm not exactly familiar with shambhala but i'm sure i will be by the end of the evening yeah i'm curious uh here zg taking a classic spot that everybody you know tries to hold down or get to such a valuable spot in this game i'm kind of curious for the eno squad right now stento there looks like they're going for a care package and they went for the school and apartment drop uncontested so they're gonna have a lot of loot here just from hitting the apartments and then they're also going for a care package and tsn is driving by right now i'm not sure if you're catching this and they put some shots on eno max but i'm waiting to see if they're gonna pull over here and start a fight yeah absolutely it would be a little bit of a rock and a hard play situation if they do because team 16 uh part of eno here is is still over at the apartment so as you said tsn 20 squad north that is uh for those of you guys who aren't uh, familiar with our teams and their abbreviations kind of kind of uh, a little bit of luck pushing through there uh but it might have been you know max who was lucky he didn't get knocked as he's a lot below half shields here but i think they did pick up a quick little care pa package i'm not sure exactly what they got in their hands but nothing like getting a care package first game blitz you know me classic stento move for sure I'm trying to see what they got did you see i wasn't able was? to see it they they i'm curious if for some reason they didn't pick it up but maybe it can uh i'm gonna check i don't think they picked it up i'm guessing maybe it was i think uh, they got stressed out a little bit by the passerbys oh. and played it safe there so it looks oh, i think they did get on it. the crate i'm doing a little investigation work over here not really seeing anything man but I'm not seeing them hold a oh it's a Groza they got a Groza it wasn't updated before okay so this is the Groza went to Eno Fortier awesome it. awesome well just about seven minutes have passed here I'm watching uh Vigorous Ghosted regroup with the rest of her squad here we haven't lost a single player every squad besides one had a full team um I think we had one person have a little bit of internet issues as they tried to get in hopefully we'll have a full uh 68 man roster for game two here that's just how it goes sometimes with online gameplay but i'm a little bit surprised we didn't see any hot drops blitz if i'm gonna be honest well dude i think you know this is people haven't been playing in a lot of events it's kind of been quiet so i think people are gonna play slow something i want to bring your attention to is that k7 who has the stacked team tonight they're crossing the bottom bridge and it's going to be really interesting interesting to see where they land right will they crash on somebody all the center spots are pretty much taken at this point so i'm just keeping an eye on, on them while they rotate here i mean the circle they could basically stay here the circle they're safe at the bottom part of the circle but we'll see where they go yeah, i'm keeping an eye on them something i'm noticing warhawk quava aimbot all very familiar with i've seen qdex around i know he's a good player um I'm not sure how how big Grandy is. I know that this squad leaned pretty heavily on Destroya in his IGLing, so I'm curious how this K7 squad uh, has been faring without him. To be honest with you, I haven't been um, following them too closely. 
Uh, but it's very interesting because I know he was, um, in a sense, in a sense, their leader, definitely their IGL. Um, but as we know, this entire team is absolutely insane. Um, fully capable uh, of IGLing themselves, I'm sure. But uh, I can't wait to see, to be honest with you. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. Looks like they're going to head east. Crazy Mob heading back to the farm. Main Gaming just made it into the zone as well. It looks like all the teams but one are in zone right now. And we could see SOB get bridge blocked by Watertown if they go in that way. It looks like they're going to veer off the road and actually head in north of Rozok. So they're going to avoid the dub hub who is setting up for a potential bridge block there. Yeah, massive shout out to the new dub hub uh, roster we're seeing here. Or I should say new old dub hub roster we're seeing yeah. here. Augie, um, Augie, one of their original members. I'm not sure uh, if this is a, a permanent stop or just a, a temporary stop back home at the dub hub but you love to see it um augie just an, an insane player so i, I love well, to see him out here with these guys i did see that the dub hub mentioned that the their team was leaving the PUBG scene their current roster so i think that you know we might see some different rosters going forward yeah from, probably from in squad. a little bit of a um maybe a test period for some new some new uh roster uh, arrangements but we'll have to wait and see a lot a lot of exciting new roster formations whether it's k7 whether it's the dub hub um a lot a lot happening here but that's phase two shifting a little bit to the southwest there blitz pulling towards pochinki lots of teams going to be pretty happy here especially this txc squad but this is a, a very interesting zone because that that dirt road there and that hill near near potato hill lots of wide open areas and, and it's difficult to play them kind of early so a lot lots of teams are going to need to figure out this rotation in this zone or the next zone so we'll have to keep an eye on these um these movements from some of these squads especially k7 look at them they're heading back around the south side of prison around the wood yard all the way back maybe down to milta to catch that edge down there i love watching some of these top teams and, and those rotations are just kind of insane you know yeah, for sure, especially for them to be rotating this late when you don't know where anybody is. It'll be interesting to see. They've, they're have they they're so knowledgeable about how people play these events and these tournaments that you know, you know they're not going to make a stupid decision. But everywhere's taken in front of them. So we'll see. Looks like Vigorous, Noxie. Yeah, I was watching uh, Noxie having some shots there, but he, he's lost he's a teammate separated elsewhere. separated from his team. I'm gonna take a look at the map. I think Ghosted is with the rest of the squad. Yeah, Ghosted, Ghosted should be getting revi revived. Noxie ventured out to this hill. He's only got a VSS in his hand, so they must have had limited loot as we saw them drop just to the east side over there um, at Scrapyard and at Hall of Fame. But Noxie's in a good spot to try to pick up some kills here. But he saw no Ghosted get killed there. Different teams are rotating through. I, I think he's going to try to regroup with the squad. He's going to need to be careful here, Blitz, because the Weasels have pulled up in, in what I like to call the phase dip just to his left here. Wow, and Noxie's missing a tire. I don't know if you mentioned that. So he's going to be going a little slower, but he's pretty close to making it home to this compound. Just made it. Yeah, Weasels did take that, that dip back there. Weaseled their way in. Yeah, Noxie does get back with the squad. That That's... Uh... We talked about it earlier today already. Uh, we, we saw Vigorous. Sometimes they lose people early, but that's not what we want to see from the squad. They're, they're so talented. They've got some of the best comms. We've had Astro listen ins with them before. Maybe we'll get uh, fortunate enough to find a good time to jump into their comms today. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm glad Noxie got back with the squad there. They're going to be in a good spot here for the time being. Uh, the thing is, yeah, the, the, K7 Quavoff has pulled up in the dip to kind of keep an eye on them there. So rotation's going to be uh, probably tough as, as it comes. But I'm trying to keep an eye on the all the different K7's shots. K7 actually heading right towards the Weasels. In between the Weasels and Vigorous, yep. this could be bad for them here. They might get, they might lose somebody out of the car. Warhawk goes to half health, and he gets knocked from the car from Noxie. It was just Warhawk in that car alone. Qdex and I believe Aimbot are gonna make it to this dip. Unfortunately, they're gonna lose one of their members here. Uh, Quavoff does thirst that kill on Warhawk, making sure that um, no one else picks it up. Weasels pick up a knock onto Vigorous here. These are just long range shots, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think we're gonna see any pushes or any thirsts come out besides the one onto uh, Warhawk there. It looks like Boatman with a knock onto SOB. Yeah, on the, the car, I think, as well. Wow, yeah, on the top of the hill, the, the SOB team. Uh, one of our, our new squads debuting in the main gaming weekly uh unfortunately lose a member there that was a 
Actually, they've lost two members. I don't know if they both got dropped there. I know I saw Boatman with a snipe out of the car was was one of them, I believe. Yeah, they yeah, lost. They're going uh, to the top of the hill here, which is so hard to hold, especially with only two players. But they'll stay alive for now, for sure. It's interesting, Blitz. That entire hill, if you take a look at your map really quickly, that entire hill where they pulled up, that dirt road is a really powerful spot to play. If they move a little bit down the dirt road, you can play the, the, the shack on the cliff. I'm going to take a Absolutely. little bit of a look at that area. It, it might be an area they can hold down uh, as a two-man. They're actually moving that way right now. I'm watching Maverick and Goose run to the east right now to that shack. So they're going to be in a really good spot. Center zone as a two-man um, might be hold uh, possible to hold that down. But again, take a look at your map blitz. There are so many teams on the north side outside of zone that have to find their way through this this edge of zone. And it looks like CK, Bizarre, kind of leading the console killers uh, through that right now. Teams have got to be really careful, Blitz. There's still 17 teams up, 64 players alive as we approach the 15 minute mark. Yeah, this is a really, really tough circle because there's just no compounds on the north side to hold. There's just that dirt road. The only major compounds are on the bottom are taken. There is farm is still open, but all these teams on the north are going to try to figure out where to go. And there's not much room to rotate left or right. Actually, weasels are rotating with CE right now on the right side of the map. Frisky, Frisky's going to hide in the mansion and get away. The weasels are going to continue to rotate on the right side. Eno's trying to rotate on the top side. There are so many teams up there. Yeah, unbelievable. I'm, I'm keeping up with all of these rotations. The Weasels now taking shots from the Rico's Rough next. That's Shanks kind of letting out some M4 shots. But these uh, RR squad is, is very split here. It looks like uh, CE pulled up on one of the shelter bumps just about. But RR is spread all over here. They're going to be in a world of hurt here, Blitz. This is probably our first team fight. Yeah, I'm watching CE right now on Frisky, and they don't have much room to work with because RR has the rocks, and they're out of the zone. Brody laying down some nice shots here with the red dot on the barrel. Vigorous in the meanwhile, uh, wrapping around the northeast side. Actually, Gravy with some mini shots. Third party Frisky in the backside. There's smokes everywhere. Brody wow. with the barrel in his hand. Red dot dropped, quaked like it's nothing he's looking for feng chu here the revive is going out onto frisky i believe in that smoke so it's just two up right now for ce i don't know how aggressive rr is going to be playing this it's actually aimbot that thirsts one of those kills uh, so they're down just past ce so rr doesn't need to push and vigorous is actually making it in on the back side behind rr right now feng chu is got brody in his sights gets the knock <laughs> with the last bullet heady i think there oh that's a nice knock one of the players grabbed a, a vehicle and is kind of making a flank i was curious what this play was but it's it's aggressive and you love to see it he's got the 3x on the gun it's going to be a little bit too much scope for that range unfortunately it, they're able to get traffic end down now De debert is gonna get thirsted this is causing some chaos brody they lose brody in the process as well shanks goes down so this ends up really hurting rr yeah what could have been maybe dealt with by with a little more aggression swiftly they could have wiped ce if they kind of pushed over the top top of that hill and played it a little aggressive unfortunately too many third parties have come into play here blitz and it's only one member of that uh four man uh 4v4 eight man fight that we were watching it's frisky trying to find any cover he can here with the blue uh on his back here i'm not really sure he has the ability to go down into yeah he can't go down into the tunnel at all and it's long range Shots from Jaeger wow. representing the console killers all the way over on that hill. Past K7 in the dip, just to the north side of TXC. That's some great shots. Picking up some points for CK. They're still four strong, and they've got three Vigorous kills already. Up on Eno right next to this, right on the bottom side across from Shelter. They just pulled up under Eno. I think we're going to see some fighting. And Prodigy goes down. Ghost is trying to get a first aid off. Noxy just got some help. He's going to try to push with the M4 with Gravy. If he's so close to getting a knock there. Gravy playing again, playing the side of the hill. He can't get a knock. Uh, it's going to be fourth here doing a good job. I think a third party might have come into play here now. Console oh, never mind. killers showed up behind him. Yeah, console killers at the right time pull up on this fight. They are going to lose a member, maybe two. Exactly that. So they've picked up seven kills amidst all of the carnage blitz. They're down to just two members. It's going to be Ranger Jr. and Bazaar. And then now a fourth party. It's going to be Zodiac Gaming led by Paulo Sam joining the party as well. You love to see the aggression. These teams realizing that it's their time to strike, time to pick up some kills, time to get some points. 
points on the board here it's just two members from console killers you wonder how much information is being passed around from the zg squad linkadox is wrapping the, the low double. side and he's got tacticals with him blitz there you go a nade by shambhala does it that's it they picked up the final kills here they're gonna look around make sure there's no other squads here zg4 deep picking up their first kills of the game with uh, a nice nade from shambhala they're gonna have plenty of loot here blitz yeah, so they came in a little late there, but it was perfect because they didn't get, they didn't risk losing any players. So it tacticals with a nasty SLR heady from QDEX out of the car again. And then taking out Aimbot, they just got back to back players out of the car. Wait, wait, that, that was both players out of the car. I just switched to tacticals as he got the oh second kill. Oh my God. They Insane were both in a car, accuracy. huh? And he's taking down big players, Aimbot and QDEX going out in 10th place. K7's not going to be happy with their first round of the day. They do have four more to bounce back. Tacticals with some filthy, disgusting SLR spam spray on the car there. He's got the old school 5.56 4X on the gun, and he's he's putting it to work. I couldn't believe that. I mean, that was two dossiers just immediately getting shot. I mean, I think they were multiple people firing at the cars but it happened so fast blitz we've got a big fight breaking out on the west side of zone afi are pushing down on a, a main gaming i'm trying to get into exodia's point of view omerta leading Just the way down knocked. yep exodia got dropped by omerta he's got the ace in his hand with the red dot he's got plenty of teammates too mg Looks like they're down to just Sizzle and Medusa on this side of the map. The Mollies are coming out from all different AFI players. Affinity, always an aggressive squad, always well put together as a four-man in the end of games. We're so used to them seeing uh, them deep in games, no matter if they're rotating on edge of zone or if they're centered up early on. They're going to be looking for these final two kills on the main gaming. Medusa and Sizzle doing all they can to hold strong. It looks like AFI is going to take the south side and try to get low side on the hill while baby Joey, the lone ranger as he often is, is going to be playing the flank, kind of clearing the shack first, pushing down on the north side. They found ah, sizzle, sizzle in the smoke. It's just one member left. They've got the thirst. Baby Joey kind of just clearing this side. He does pick up the final kill, but he was already actively watching for the third party push, watching out for his teammates back while they get the final members of main gaming this squad. Truly multitasking. Joey's watching the north side. He hasn't picked up any information on these toxic members yet, but those uh, SKS shots kind of gave Tremi away. Trading out shots here. Joey goes down to 27 HP. Tremis gets hit by a bolt. They both back off. They've got information on each other. Affinity Blitz already have eight kills to their names. Zolodi with five incredible man and uh yeah i was just gonna mention five kills for zality and we went in four minutes there we went from 17 teams down to seven so a lot of action with that phase four circle close and people having to kind of push into each other and right now the circle is not the center zone has no compound so this is going to be out in the open everyone's going to be using these trees and these dips for these final few zones blitz take a look at your map look who's centered up the two, the two, they survived. The two, the two men for SOB. They've left the shack. It might have got a little too hot up there. They went down into the dips there where no one would, would really be uh, unless you were forced into there as a damaged squad. Uh, speaking of damaged squad, the dub hub still has a member up here. Is it just Mick? Yeah, they picked up one kill. Uh, Mick picked up a breadstick, stopped in Olive Garden before he made it to the edge of zone here. He does have the crazy mob really close. The weasels are not far, by, uh, not far away either. He's going to have a tough time on this edge, but not a lot of action going on here right now with just seven teams alive. As we said, those phase two to phase three zones really eliminated a lot of players here. And just take a look at your map. Yeah, I'm curious now what AFI is going to do with this next circle if they're not in it here. Same thing. Are we going to see a circle go up to the mountain or down the mountain? Could be really big for TXC or for the crazy mob. We're about to see the circle pop right now, and it's going to shift center south here so crazy mob is still in the zone now afi txc and zg are all going to need to move in closer together and there's no way they're all going to survive in this zone now watching boatman he's kind of keeping an eye on zodiac gaming here you saw paulo sam and, and linkadox try to move to zone he already tagged one with the with the awm some nice shots coming out from paulo sam here and baby joey with the bolt he's gonna drop Another member of TXC. This might open up a little bit of a window. We know how aggressive uh, AFI can be at times. They don't really have a push here, though. I'm, I'm kind of getting an overview watching from the backside above AFI. They, they've got that knock. It looks like the revive is coming out almost instantly on that member of TXC. He's already up. 
So this four mana VFI is just gonna hang out on this edge of zone. I think they might just play this dirt road rage into zone, but we'll have to wait and see. There's just so many teams. There's a lot of four mans up left blitz. We have AFI, we have TXC. Zodiac Gaming is pushing over. You love to see this. They've only got I a think couple TXC kills so get far. Sandwiched here from ZG and from AFI. ZG's yeah. coming very close here. Tacticals and Link of Docs and Shambhala very close. Yep, they're all getting angles. I don't think uh, TXC has any idea. The, the Onslaught's waiting for them. Oh, Sly got caught out. He's trying to play down. He's one shot. Kobo goes down to one shot as well. Tacticals with some nice barrel red dots. He's clearing the shack where people are often are, but there's no one over there. Shambhala takes down Sly, so it's only Boatman and Tremis up for this squad. It was a very nice play by ZG to kind of sneak up. It's going to be Linkadox taking down Tremis, so it's left to just Boatman here. As you said, they're in an absolute pinch here. AFI is looking for the last kill. They know exactly what they're dealing with. There were kills all over the kill feed. Nades are coming in here. Boatman might not be able to... He does find a way to dodge that. Wow, moves off the nade. There you go. Another one's going to take him down. AFI joins in on the fun. And now we have another 4v4 versus... Uh, AFI versus Zodiac Gaming. Oof. Linkadox Link drops Dox light quickly. Light with just the last of his uh, flip there, last of his mag. Now he's throwing in a nade. They kind of have the advantage right now. Zodiac on top of AFI. Probos are coming in right now from all different angles. Shambhala with a big rotation on the side. Knocking Baby Joy. That's two down for AFI. Only Omerta and Zalady left. Crazy accuracy from Link Dox with the barrel red dot switched off the three times. He's looking for anything he can. Thirst, knocks in the smoke. It's going to be Paulo Sam with the Groza that takes down that final member of AFI. 11 kills now for Zodiac Gaming. This is their first ever main gaming weekly series as a squad, and they're making it count. Five teams just remain here, Blitz. Yeah, Zodiac pushed over 10 kills with that last fight there. They're at 11. Somehow down below, Maverick has Maverick nated Goose. Nated Goose. I don't know how that happened. I don't know either. They don't have an angle on it. Uh, Tacticals knows where it happened. You can see the smoke that's kicked up from the dust of the grenade. And his drop of representing the weasels actually takes down Linkadox. There's some instantly. That's unfortunate. I think the Goose there, one of the players, might have dropped an accidental frag. Might have been Goose's teammate. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't exactly went, see Link it off. So a bunch just, of smokes came down. So oh we'll my see. gosh, Blitz. Look just over the ridge here. There's two packages. I think that might be what Linkadox was checking out. Um, when Droppa for the Weasels actually got a knock. I think he used the, the packages as a little bit of bait. The Weasels are still four strong here. They only have that one kill that Droppa just got onto Linkadox. Um, but wow, I look at there. There's two packages there. I think that's why Linkadox got a little bit curious. Wow, and Crazy Mob left the compound, and they're making a big rotation on the left side, the west side of the map. And only Shambhala's over here. Left Tactical is kind of coming to join him. He, he might have a sight line on somebody soon here, still on the top. Doesn't need to leave this ridge just yet. Yeah, I think they're Crazy Mob. coming in, but it's slow. I think they might. I think Crazy Mob are trying to clear out this SOB squad. They're using Molotov. They're using everything they can. It's actually a vector in the hands of Bliv. They get the first knock. Uh, Dreams elsewhere picks up that solo for the dub hub. Mick is going to be out in fifth place. And I think that was uh, the SOB squad that went out in fourth place. So we're instantly down to our final five teams. Um, Dreams got dropped from the top side. It's already Shambhala in tacticals leading this, this push down this uh, southeast side, rewrapping this entire squad. They didn't even, uh, excuse me, southwest side. They didn't have any idea that, that this squad was so split. I can't believe that they survived that push. They were so out in the open there. Now it's just one left for Crazy Mob. And again, like Stento mentioned, four up for the Weasels. So let's see what happens with Bliv. Will he kind of play spoiler here for ZG or Zodiac? This is kind of the time where I think the Weasels just need to get good zone. They, they know what they're dealing with with Zodiac Gaming because they were the ones who knocked and thirsted one of those members. Zodiac Game is going to push in here and try to clean up the rest of the crazy mob. They found Bliv and his tacticals with the barrel, big. picking up his sixth kill of the game. And now we've got a four on three situation. We know Zodiac Gaming can frag out, but can they handle the four men of the weasels? Yeah, we're going to have to wait and see here, Blitz. This is going to be a good ending. Yeah, Jolly's playing a huge position here on the opposite side. If Paulo Sam takes him out, though, they're going to lose contain on this east side. And Jolly's actually going pretty deep here on the rock. I think that's going to be a big uh, kind of counter play, potentially, if Jolly does his Paulo Sam's down. waiting for him. It's Groza versus Groza. 
Oh, Sam heard the footsteps, and Jolly goes down, which is a big loss. I just mentioned this for the Weasels. Now they've lost contain on the side. Now Paul Sam will be able to rotate this way if he wants to. What's interesting is, is Paulo Sam doesn't have that information that we know. He doesn't know that this entire side is wide open, so he'd have to kind of breach this this ridge, which is kind of in the wide open, and, and kind of start to flank around down. I don't think he can do that. He doesn't have that info. So we, we do have Jolly going down to the zone there in the end. Um, Team 11, Zodiac Gaming, picking up 15 kills, and now it's just 3v3. They're in, they're in a decent spot. They have better zone than the Weasels here, Blitz. I think they have info on genetics and prodigy, but I don't think Drapa has showed himself yet. But Drapa still has kind of a good spot there in that middle rock for sure. Circle did kind of go back to Zodiac. Yeah, Drapa's in good zone there. here, so it's interesting. It's it's really about that gun skill. Who can not take a knock? Who can drop the headies down with some AR spray? We know how good these guys are. You don't have long to peek with some of the AR sprays that these guys are capable of, so... Um, as you can see, Droppa playing it pretty close to the vest here, prone behind this rock here. Just seeing if anyone's pushing this northeast side. He's just clearing left and right. Um, unfortunately, he's not going to find anyone on that side. The rest of the ZG squad is staying in that dip. Probably and until they they're forced out. Nice it's, yeah, it's such a nice ridge to have. As soon as they cleared um, the, the Bliv, the rest of the crazy mob out of there, they really picked up what, what was the power spot. Um, and unfortunately... Um, Jolly on the top side didn't know that Paulo Sam was kind of waiting for him. He was kind of the X factor for this squad. Um, and unfortunately, Paulo Sam with, with some nice patient plays grows in hand and, and, and Jolly really didn't even have a chance, even with a grows of his own. Yeah, I mean, that was such a, that's like a great push to make in, I guess, like a rank situation or like normals, but against Zodiac, you almost want like another player there with you in, in that case. Because it's so type, tough to fight these guys one-on-one. -on -one. They just have such a stacked team. This is phase nine, Blitz. Uh, it looks yeah, like center zone. The dot oh, is actually I not think, so bad. I think but... Genetics got lit on fire there. And Shambhala, as he went to move, just drops him with the barrel. So it's just two members for the Weasels. Zodiac Gaming seem to be in full control here. These guys are not messing around with the barrel sprays. No, they're playing very tight. They're, they're playing this very strategically here. They're not getting any... They're not getting loose just because it's 3v2. Excuse me. Otter just made a location known. Droppa makes the play. From Droppa. Straight headies he on to Shambhala enough. with that M4 of their blitz. A push is coming here. Droppa 1v1 here versus Follow Sam. The tactical is actually wrapping to help out. We have a 2v2. Oh, Follow Sam. Down. Uh, it was a little bit of a, a do -si do here on the rock. Follow Sam was dancing with Droppa. He eventually gets him with a little hip fire. Snaps onto the final member of the Weasels. Follow Sam stacking some kills for an already massive round for Zodiac Gaming. That's 18 kills and the chicken dinner going out to ZG. The Weasels, uh, we've seen them do better here uh, kill wise. They're, you know, they're going to be happy with the second place, but only picking up two kills. Crazy Mob. Five kills in the third place. Uh, we saw this SOB squad lose a couple people in rotation early on. Um, not picking up any kills in the fourth place. And rounding out our top five, ladies and gentlemen, in match one is the Dub Hub with one kill. Back to our intermission screen here. All right, Blitz. What's something uh, that kind of stood out to you from that first game there? Well, every time I see this zone, we were kind of talking about it. When you're on the top side of that mountain, it's so open in such a rolling hill. It's a great spot to hold, but it's also hard to hold the entire thing. So it's so easy for your team to kind of get spread out, right? Because you're like, I want to cover the right side, the left side. That's kind of what happened to TXC there as they got pushed from both angles. And there were so many good teams on the top side. Um, AFI, TXE, and then Zodiac there. But Zodiac, though, was on the roll, and I think because they had been shooting so much, you know, they were so warmed up at that point that when they came down the hill, saw Crazy Mob, who had been in the compound the whole time, and the Weasels, who had been kind of holding there, they just weren't ready for the power of the three-man Zodiac squad there coming down the hill and ended up playing in their favor, and they got the dub. Yeah, I think what kind of started, what kind of got the ball rolling was when they when they pushed that that TXE squad. They They had a really nice like kind of quiet sneaky push onto txc wiped them on the north side and that just started just a massive movement of kills they they killed the rest of txc and then pushed through afi and they just started and once they had control of that top of the hill you know they kind of got some good spread figured out what was going on on the south side of zone 
um and from that point you know they they were just what they lost the link docs and from that point on they really just once they got into that dip after w uh, wiping crazy mob i think that was that was kind of game over they were they weren't going to lose to the weasels at that point you know uh, absolutely i mean their barrel sprays were on point they were locked in for game one sometimes people game one they're still kind of warming up a little bit i mean i'm sure they played a little beforehand but they were doing a good job switching between the spray scopes to the red dots and they had plenty of throwables there to really clutch that up but you got to hit your shots at the end of the day and they they were definitely very accurate there as i was kind of tun tuning into the first person view but again like we said that's one of the stacked teams here tonight to play um and my team to watch i left. said it was my team to watch coming in uh, 18 kills in the chicken dinner. That's just map one. We've got four more matches to watch here, Blitz. We're going to be right back here on Arangle in just a few moments, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. Sounds good. GG's.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Main Gaming Weekly Series. Today, April 3rd, is a test run of our weekly series. We are going to be bringing this back full-time on April 17th with the launch of Main Gaming LLC and our new website. Um, along on our website will be a, a calendar of dedicated events. All of these events, including this $1,000 Main Gaming Weekly every Monday, are welcome to everyone, and they are free to join. So if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask anyone um, from Main Gaming, any moderators in the chat. Please reach out to our, our Twitter and our Discord. Uh, Main Gaming is a business dedicated to growing the console PUBG scene, um, and we are here to stay. And there will be nothing but more and more events, bigger and better uh, than ever. But Blitz... Enough is enough. We've got our second plane path from military base heading all the way up to Stalber here. A good range of the drops are going to be av available for a lot of these zones. But what jumps out to you uh, right away on this uh, map and this plane path? Well, first and foremost, again, to remind everybody, we're doing two Aaron Gauls, then Miramar, then back to two Aaron Gauls. And I'm liking that we're seeing a different plane path here. The other one was from Zarki, kind of down to Milta. So this is a, uh, definitely a way different drop path. We're going to see two teams going to military base. And I guess we'll start to determine if people will pick up where they're landing because we're playing four Erangel matches. People might start to learn a little bit by this game, game three and game four, where a few teams are landing. Obviously, there's some teams have always been kind of going to similar places um, from previous tournaments and events like Crazy Mob always going to farm. Example, in K7, kind of sticking with their military base drop. But that information can help a lot, especially with rotations and the best teams pay attention to that information. Absolutely, and I was just going to say, with this plane path going basically straight north to south, it really opens up a lot of different... Wow, we have a knock and a thirst already. Noxie has taken down Shanks. I didn't exactly did see. It did the same drop. Did Shanks get the car and Noxie got a shoddy and knocked him out of it? I didn't I didn't get over I there quick enough. I think that's what happened. I think that's I, what happened. I, I they think did the Shanks might have gotten the car and Noxie got a weapon and knocked him out while maybe he was trying to run him over. I didn't see what happened here, ladies and gentlemen, but Noxie picking up a quick kill. Unfortunately for Rico's Roughnecks, that shelter drop is going to be probably hotly contested with Vigorous all night. That is a very popular uh, esports uh, car that they're both dropping on there that that Noxie and um, one of the members from our mm -hmm. artists went for but um, As I was saying that north and south plane path that we have really jumbles up Some of the rotations because that first circle can go anywhere and it did just that half of it is in the water to the north Centered up on Severny and we have one team and it is that CE squad one of our uh, newest squads to our main gaming weekly events um and they're checking on them. This is Capricorn Esports. Not really familiar with this team, except that they're newer to the squad. So this is Feng Chu, Fract, Debert, and Frisky. Yeah, as I said, I'm not familiar with Capricorn Esports here, but this is the whole entire point of our events, right, Blitz? We want to get new teams in here. We want to get new faces, um, and we want to shine a little bit of light on everyone out here, whether they're a competitive player, whether they're a streamer, um, whether they're just trying to, you know, sweat a little bit with some friends and have some fun. Uh, we really do welcome all sorts of players, and um, I'm excited to see what they can do. Yeah, and they got zoned this time. Really the only team in the circle. I mean, uh, SOB and part of CK are in the zone, but really the only team in the, in the main part of the zone. We already have three teams rotating on the west side there. I was going to say, I I'm curious if any team is going to stop here for a potential bridge block because you have the Yas Bridge, you have the Rosak Bridges, you have a, kind of the Watertown, Georgia Pole Bridges that could be blocked in some way, shape, or form, or if people are just going to focus on getting into the zone because it's only game two. And as we always say in these events, usually the aggressive plays kind of pick up as the games go on here. Uh, and Dub up rotating very close to AFI right now, uh, west of Gaka. Yeah, I, th I think most veteran uh, players know at this point if you're going to be rotating f around this area, it's a good chance you're going to run into this AFI squad. So Augie leading the way. He hears the shots ringing out, so he's going to head a little bit to the east. Um, but the rest of AFI is already in a vehicle, kind of stressing out, uh, stressing them from behind here, Blitz. But uh, I think the Dub Hub is going to have no problem uh, finding their way into zone here. Uh, but just as you were saying, every team has to find their way over or across this kind of 
a river that sticks out in the middle all the way from George Pool to, to Yasnaya. So most teams are going to probably try to get to the north side of that early here because this first zone does look like it's going to end up north of that. I, I don't think it's very likely we do end up on the south side here. I'm watching tons of rotations. TSN is shooting, at, uh, shooting at VK. VK, who's also chasing half of main gaming here. So main gaming, if they do pull up in a good spot, they might be able to pick up some kills on, on some rotators behind them. They are going to keep going to zone here, Medusa. And I'm not exactly sure Sizzle are going to hop out here. They're going to have a chance to pick up some kills here. It looks like Sizzle and Medusa oh, potentially. Only have has some an Uzi, though. Yeah, an Uzi and an Ace. We'll see what they can uh, pull out here. There are some tags now. We've got 27 damage on one of the players. Lots of cars going through. And uh, with that start game loot, not much you're going to be able to do. Actually, some good shots coming out from VK here. they got to be careful not get to take a knock. They might, they might actually get crashed as a two-man here. But... Um, no knocks coming out here. Several cars are going to come over the same spot. They're calling out to the rest of their squad to come join up. It looks like TSN is going to try to come this way as well. Blitz, we were talking about this. All of these teams are going to want to get over this water or around it as soon as possible. And we're seeing the, the result of that right now. The two men from main gaming dealing with a little bit of chasers uh, in the form of 20 squad north. They're just... Yeah, they're going to get out though. They're, I think uh, Acid Burns out at least putting some shots and TSN. Nothing really hits there. Yeah, no knocks yet coming out on the on the 20 squad north here. It's just acid burn and one oh. other play. Oh my gosh, is that a drive-by knock? That might have been from the car. That's a drive-by knock with the bolty. We didn't see it wow. in first person, but we were close by. It's gonna need to be an instant revive here. Exodi needs to get that off because the four man of TSN is crashing. Oh, this oh, was a big no. mistake for main gaming. Acid burn does pick up one of them, but it's just it's just too uh, unfortunate there for main gaming. A drive-by headshot out of the car is going to lead to half of their squad getting wiped you have to tip the cap to tsn uh shv with the knock there i think they're going to be able to get uh the revives up here this is a dangerous spot this hill in early game they're going to have lots of angles shooting at them uh the two man of main gaming uh is really the only threat to them right now shooting from long range so unfortunate there for mg these early game rotations um can be devastating if you're not careful enough what was um an aggressive play from the two men of MG really backfired from an uh, amazing shot. So um, MG chopped in half and um, we'll have to see what they what they do as a two man here. If 20 squad north, I haven't seen this roster for TSN. I've seen them with different teams in the past. So we'll have to see how aggressive this squad is. If they can locate the two man for main gaming, will they push them? You think Blitz? They I did just push off a of one knock. I think they, I think they're gonna take their kills and and sort of walk away. So I I got kind of caught with K7 was rotating on the Georgia Pole bridge, and Aimbot fell off the bridge. So I was kind of just catching that after the main gaming team went down. But it looks like Aimbot's gonna be okay. But I thought they were gonna lose Aimbot there. I was gonna say though, since talking about main gaming, that was definitely a risky two-two split there this early on um, with with you know so many great teams. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know, know if they were trying there, to regroup but... together or if, if they were. Um just rotating and trying to take some shots uh, i'm not yeah, really sure but opportunity right and definitely just kind of uh, yeah. yeah definitely backfired but look at this ghosted is pulling up on a double package situation on the north side wow is this two packages right here it is <laughs> does, what, does she does she have two mks so this is interesting you know i talked to oh uh, i didn't see they lost prodigy and gravy and now noxy is down ghosted is alone although she picked up some good loot Noxie is so, down. So this is interesting. The Weasel Squad took out the other two members of Vigorous, and I guess they're just chasing them still. Noxie's down now, so they're going to get the third member here. We missed it, but I saw in the kill feed the Weasels had taken out, again, two wow, of the members there. Wow, I did not see. Yeah, we were we were watching the, the MG versus TSN fight, I think. I didn't see that in the kill feed. Unfortunate for Vig, it's going to be ghosted just with uh, some golden loot as a solo now. So unfortunate. Wow. Um, we got a little bit over a minute until we see this first circle up, but the Weasel's picking up three quick kills, two to Prodigy, one to Droppa. Um, and as we said, that vigorous squad, a veteran squad, um, just plagued by that those early game losses sometimes. So you, you do hate to see that, but we'll see what Ghosted can do as a one man. Um, I think they did pick up some kills in the, fir in the first game, so they're very much still in this tournament here. Um, something to look at here, Blitz, for a second is Zodiac Gaming. Our winners from the first round with a big game i think that 18 kills starting out hot here um seem to be playing this round slow they're up by stalber as a four man kind of rotating on the edge this was a very big rotation for several teams 
so it's very interesting to keep an eye on how these different teams handle rotations like this when the circle is so Absolutely, rude to I'm, them I'm, I'm I'm really curious as to why ZG, I mean, I get why ZG maybe is playing slow because they, they have the lead now and they just want to play smart, but K7 and ZG, two, two top teams here, uh, at least player-wise, are playing so outside the zone when both of their locations are kind of odd, right, being in Georgia Pole and Stalber, but ZG is making this push down. Maybe they want to catch some teams on the outside. I wonder if that's part of their strategy is to catch some, some people out about because usually some of the maybe the better teams go center you know so maybe they're looking for yeah this is such a, a tough area to play uh the the north side of the stalber hill there's there's some ridges that you can kind of snuggle up against on some some dirt roads and some shacks um but you really need to you know know how to play this area or, or you can really run into a you know a trap or, or a team that you didn't know was there but zg seemed to kind of be in full uh, full control of this they're following tacticals along the dirt road i was just kind of talking about they're going to be able to play that for a while now as circle two has pulled heavy to the northeast saverni is still almost center blitz but it's going to be crazy mob who's in the best position here uh at this warehouse there's another really good spot just to the east side those three houses but crazy mob four deep um Bliv again with a, a vector i'm wondering if this is uh Bliv is this someone i've seen play uh tournaments for a long time blitz and he yeah, i've seen him use a uh, a vector now in the first two games i'm trying to figure out if this is a a thing he's doing now well sometimes you know i've always found that when you're playing these competitive events a lot of your fighting tends to be really far away and then really up close right people crashing or kind of dmring from a distance so sometimes having that the vector is helpful we, we've always seen acid burn run that uh ooh, sob fighting at the very top of the map there they're getting so much got kicked out of a car oh my god they're getting chased down by tsn right now this tsn squad is just mad max so carnage right they've just been doing damage to, to multiple teams while rotating as a squad i love to see that so i'm a little confused because i think at the end of the main of the season last year we saw 20 squ squad south in some of the events and this is 20 squad north so i'm not exactly familiar with their their org and how it's structured and and their whole roster of players or how they're associated but definitely a team to look out for tonight yeah absolutely there's a couple of players of rr trying to shoot at these cars they're two and two this tsn squad they haven't found a home yet they might if they push a little bit to the south those three houses are still open but um it looks like they're considering crashing right above rr and looking down maybe looking for a knock we've seen how aggressive these guys are we've seen them put the bolties to work so i'm i'm interested i'm getting into shv's perspective he was the one who hit the uh actually he doesn't even have a bolty it must have been one of the other uh, members that hit the um bolty shot out of the car Yeah, I don't know who it was. Was it Caillou, maybe, potentially? They all have this. Yeah, I think it was maybe uh, K <laughs> They're all three-letter names. Uh, uh, I thought it was SHV, but he only has an SLR. So <laughs> look at the kill feed there. VK picking up a kill on TE. Dreams with a bolty knock onto um, Havoc for um, Team Toxic. I think they're going to be able to get that revive off. But, yep, that, there you go. Uh, and one of the, the knocks happening here. Ooh. Oh, KYU drops one of the members ends. for RR. We've seen these guys be aggressive. What are they going to do with this? There's only a two-man down here. This revive obviously is going to happen instantly. These guys are in the same building. I was going to say, they're using if, it if to push. Up, this is hard compound to push, but now that they're, they are had the knock, they're going to push in quickly here. Wow, an aggressive push. It's just such an aggressive push. I, I, again, I'm not familiar with this TSN squad, but I'm loving the aggression out of them. Once they got that headshot knock, it it, it seemed a little bit delayed, but you know they they did get in their cars, head right over here, um, and a stunner right on to Caillou there. But he pushed straight through it. A little bit of hip fire with the ace through the window, taking it down. He had a teammate there with him, but um, some great team plays out of TSN. Definitely the the team to watch so far in the match, uh, second match of the evening so far. For sure, I'm seeing a kind of a sloppy fight here. We, I think we missed the initial aspect of it, but uh, Affinity here was fighting with Dubhub. Multiple members down. Affinity is actually in the zone here. Two members down for Dubhub. I'm in Augie's perspective. He's, yeah, he's pushing right. He, he's just spotted some of the Affinity members. They spotted him back. Augie oh, does drop the there, there with some nice headshots, but uh, Baby Joey with some headshots of his own, and he's going to go for that instant revive. Um, uh, 
a patented player i see a lot of really veteran players move um, uh, excuse me make is is that quick revive get the teammate up immediately if there's no one that is going to be able to shoot or get an aid on you to get back to uh four strong instantly so some great team play there from joey gets his elodie up instantly the heal is already off yeah, it's just going to be one member up. um that's wabaku left for the dub hub so unfortunately no kills for the dub Ooh. hub down to just one member Wait. here in a, in Main a, gaming's gonna rotate late right by Affinity. They might get kicked out of the car here. They've been in the blue for a while. Medusa's super low health does get shot out of the car. They've lost the tire. This is gonna be really tough for Sizzle. They're both gonna go down, and that's Main Gaming eliminated. They were trying to sneak in on the top side of zone, and of course, Affinity's just stuck in the blue there and caught them. Yeah, Affinity phase three here. They've got 90 seconds, pretty comfortable. This doesn't chunk that hard, as you can see. It's just uh, damaging health by, by one HP. Um, and sent out ce right now is trying to hold out illusion they're on the edge of saverni i don't know if they have a vehicle for their name i mean they don't need to leave right now but they're I love going this to need spot, to leave eventually though, this is such a good spot to pull up when you want to um gatekeep the rest of severni it looks like a uh, vig and uh vk are in there it's ghosted do they know she's there I don't think no i don't think they know she's there she's behind the door she hasn't moved a muscle they're all over her blitz i'm looking from above they are all over Insane. her they have no idea she is there and the whole scene is being watched by a four-man capricorn esports just hanging out on the ridge i don't know i'm looking around from the aerial view i don't see any vehicles here blitz that's what i was noticing um, but you know, if one of the members of VK gets knocked or even CE gets knocked and VK pushes across the street, Ghosted might be able to get oh, some it, knocks it is or gonna be from so behind. so interested to see how Ghosted plays it. Everyone these days has such a good headset, ladies and gentlemen, so she cannot move her feet at all. Reload her gun. You crank a heal. Sub is right next to her. Sub is right shed. next to her. Oh, Tony's, Tony went for a push. He knocks Debert. It's just cracked left over here because two of the other members of CE pushed away. So I think that was a really silly split up. I don't know why they I don't, left. I don't understand that at all, Blitz. Why would you leave? They they VK? had the gatekeep. On. Why why would you? Why did they move? I don't. I, I never understand that. They had these this a full four man gate kept with position. Um, let's make a point here. I've seen Tony before. I don't remember exactly what team he was on. Maybe he was on one of the old um genesis squads with paulo sam we've seen tony put in yes, work before so, i've seen illusion this, yes. i've seen tony so, so this vk squad is, uh, is some veteran Tony's players a, here but a monster he's an aggressive player for sure yeah and he started things off with the knock there but you'd like to think they would have been able to do something different if there was just four of them sitting on that ridge i'll never understand why why they separated there when when they left you know i oh I, I don't get it. I think, they I think had, they had a good didn't want someone to backfill them there, but that was way too risky to split up. I mean, maybe send one person to cover your back, but to, to, to split two two there was really risky. Oof. Too much for me, man. Ghosted sneaking around this edge. Yeah, everyone's leaving. Ghost is here. It is phase four, though, but she's not that far from zone. I think she can outrun this. I think she's going to be okay as long as BK continues to push forward. Um, wow, long Ooh, K7 range. K7 is about to run into ZG on the east side stento they're very close to each other sorry to interrupt you no no that's a fight we need to see is did k7 already lose a member do we have any idea k7's four up nope, i'm just not sure up. where that fourth member is fourth member is um he's, aimbot he's, he all the way down way low back. Um, um these guys are usually pretty uh together i wonder what aimbot um is doing down there quave off spotted paulo sam went to shoot but then paulo sam moved behind the tree so Almost could have lost their member there. Paulo Sam did not see Quave off. I'd like to point out that um, the final member for, excuse me, one of the members for AFI just went down. It was long range from that same team, VK, we were just watching. So they're going to pick up another kill. And, and I believe that CE member did just get a knock onto one of the members for VK. So actually, I'm snapping right over to that action blitz. AFI has crashed this, and several members from VK are knocked. And, and CE Frisky continuing to do damage here. He takes down Zelodi. Wow, I'm watching baby Joey here. VK sub goes down. It's Tony. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to snap into Tony here. He's the last one left. Baby Joey's Smoking ripping out. some nades in his direction. And just as we're talking about this blitz, hits. TSN is pushing around the north side. They're trying to get involved. They're not exactly have, uh, they don't exactly have sight lines on this yet. Uh, but uh, Omerta and Baby Joey are going to need to be careful, as are these two solos that are now making it out. Baby Joey does not oh. see this member yet. 
Tony is still G hanging out in the smoke. Third party, this perfect time. CE is down to baby Joey, who's only 19 health. There's going to be a double kill here for Tony. We've seen the man work before. It's going to be cleaned up from Crazy Mob. But Tony, with some impressive work there, uh, some solo moves to pick up the final two members of AFI. Uh, AFI. Affinity is going to go out in 10th place. Excuse me, 11th place. Um, and then VK out in 10th. Wave off does get a knock on the tacticals. I'm going to snap right back to the east side of the map. Oh, two of Q our Dex heavy hitting teams. Oh, Qdex had a nice rotation. We get spotted by Paulo Sam with the heady AK kind of blocking a could have been a devastating rotation there. Yeah, and I was into War uh, excuse me, Warhawk's perspective in the third party just put him down to half health. So they're going to try to get the revive on Qdex here. I'm going to try to get a little bit of an aerial view so we can see exactly what's going on. ZG has gotten the revive off on one of their players they are down to three strong as they've lost tacticals um but they did get the revive off onto i believe linkadox here they're gonna just hold strong in these shacks because uh k7 is gonna be able to get back to four strong here the only real issue for both of these teams is the long range third parties you, you third can't parties engage really too hard yeah you can't engage too hard um from this back ridge that k7 was trying to play um even zg taking some shots in the back i believe that's going to be the weasels um truly weaseling as a third party in the, in this fashion here but um they're just excuse me they're still four strong we saw them pick up uh some nice kills early on and they're going to crash this bunker down here and they're going to be fine no one's hanging out here at all wow and k7 obviously backing off but now they have eno behind them weasel took the bunker I don't know how they're gonna have to play very smart here and hit some major shots to make a move here uh, aimbot does take one out for the eno squad this could be their push but then zg might wrap behind k7 here stenta they're heading they're trending that way right now i think zg is gonna pop up right above it's such a good K7 push from zg it's such a good push from zg here K K7 needed to engage them. I, I, it was tough for them to kind of realize that in the moment, but this push was going to be too tough. Um, and that's such a heads up wrap over the top. If not even to get into zone, to take out another big team and pick up some kills. ZG only kills, has one absolutely. kill. Uh, and you know that K7 is on their radar for someone they need to worry about. They might die to the third parties here, Blitz, but this is such a heads up play. And Warhawk is still on the scene here. He's going to drop Linkadox. Eno Max wow. takes down Paulo Sam. So it's only Shambhala here. So what was a good push, um, you know, really was, was going to come, come down to this. I feel like the third parties just... Really weren't going to let either of these two teams get into zone here. But a 2x on the barrel in the hands of Shambhala as he runs down the edge here. He hears the SLR shots from Warhawk. He's going to be able to get some good shots down here with the third party from wow. Eno Max for Team 16. Takes him out. Warhawk still alive He's here. He's going to get a medkit in the blue here. And then he got a kill onto Eno. Can he sneak up behind them still here? There's shots so much focus in. on him. These are just good shots. The tags are non-stop. Warhawk doing... His best truffle shuffle to get into zone. He's down to four but health. He's big, in uh, zone. That was, a, that was a big miss from Eno not to get Warhawk out right there, though. Yeah, it's going to take a lot of their attention, I think. They're going to be fully focused there, and, and it really depends what CK does and what some of the other teams do. But we have a big fight breaking off here. TSN has pushed down onto the Weasels, and the Weasels have been cleaning them up with help from TXC from the northwest side. So Weasels holding down uh this this dip here they lost jolly um in the crash and it's just one member left for tsn it's going to be kyu we've seen him do some uh some insane work here with the bolty for this 20 squad north team and, and it's going to be a little bit too Weasels much need to get this guy out before he, okay there we go it's like get some throwables in there man sheesh yeah that that bunker is is a good spot but can it, it can be quite tricky to play quite tricky to hold on a crash um and as you can see the the toxic team still four deep on the top side of the hill they're in a really good spot here blitz and this is actually a great time for us to go into a little bit of an astro listen in and to see what team txc is up to here so we'll jump Absolutely. right over there i'm pulling cars up and i leave it in the u.s yeah. now not, two vix not two, two, two vix so. leaving can you go push no he's in right there's a guy in this uh do you have frags trim watch your Lie in the shack below us, but I just had you done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Here, if I'm gonna drop the boost behind your boat. Getting the shack down. People in that middle shack below. One got knocked to a frag. Next to the car. Nice shot. Behind the car. You might be able to see it. I tried to throw a nade all the way down the hill. 
He just spliced him. We still have a team on the left. Uh, on the crate. They're on the uh, crate. There's two of them on the crate. Looking up hill at me. I'm gonna just shot from the fucking left. He's peeking the right edge of the smoke at that shack below y'all. Uh, I can't Got 26 brothers, Tremus. Did you pull the other car up? Yeah. I'm just looking down left here. Oh. There should be players. Yeah, they're fighting over here. Just waiting for a good shot. I tried one. Knock one below me and one tagged as well. Hey, the pop tires. Do we just push these kids out left, or is that giving them a free backfill? I don't know. Let's see, bro. I'm used to say. Depends on the terrain. No, I mean, the terrain's better. There's a ridge right there that's gonna run, like, down. I don't know how easy it's gonna be to get there, but... See the hood, see that. I have three smoke. I got nades to go and kill this guy. I have a nade in the... Uh, um, crate, sitting on the crate. On the He's running down, he's running down. I only have 60 bullets. Just gone under the ridge. I have 13. Well, so that's not ideal. Yeah. I'm all sevens as well, so they're on the car. Smoking it up. If I can get a knock on the shot, I'm gonna crash. looking at me. Okay, I heard. I just lost my vest. I'm healing. I just got knocked. Can you smoke him? Hey. Okay. Push around me. Not sure there's five behind. I don't understand how they're shooting me. I'm behind the rock, bro. Must be really where my smoke went. So some awesome comms there coming out from uh, TXC. Playing the edge of zone there, a little, little bit of a, a tough spot. They were all kind of reduced to that rock. They lost Tremis, who was kind of their their flanker there. And they're going to be back to too strong here, uh, Blitz, Sly, and Koba. But they don't really have much to work with. I think they lost a little bit of an opportunity. They knocked one of the members for the Weasels. They were discussing pushing it, um, and they never pulled the trigger. I think they're going to wish they pulled the trigger there because then they just got too much focus from CK and the Weasels at the same time. Um, and just like that, we're down to our final two teams. This was um, a slightly missed opportunity from TXC. I think they're going to wish they pushed the Weasels. Um, but just like that, we have a four-man CK trying to deal with the three-man Weasels. We have a knock on the Prodigy, but Genetics trades it right back onto Bizarre. Yeah, it's tough to say because the Weasels aren't in either. So TXC, you know, could have pushed the Weasels only to be in the same situation. And honestly, I think the biggest misplay here is that the Weasels didn't push earlier when CK were attacking TXC because now they just have nowhere to go. Genetics is going to go down. And after these smokes dissipate, even if they get Genetics up, that, that being Droppa, I think Weasel are screwed here. And the zone's coming in. I mean, he's thinking about killing Genetics there. He might think about going out to the zone himself at this point yeah i i think that's really probably all you're really considering is is going down to blue here denying a kill point um he, he's mm. gonna try to get it on the edge there g give ck an, an extra kill it's not really that big of a deal um and just match two of the evening uh but console killers with a nice round picking up nine kills in the chicken dinner the weasels seven kills and the second place um and rounding out our top three in match two of the evening is team toxic with four kills Yeah, awesome job by the Weasels there to come in and finish in the top five, both games in a row there. So that's obviously awesome to see them in, in playing very well, hopping in, and congrats to CK and TXC to place in the top three. Yeah, we didn't have much perspective on CK there. Um, I think they sent uh, two of their members into that shack that we were watching um, TXC kind of scope out for a while. They sent two into the shack while the other two kind of hung back. Um, and with the help of some third parties, they cleaned up a couple teams on, on that southwest side there. So it, it was a good job to to kind of get a nice center anchor and zone with a couple of their members there in the shack. Um, and I didn't see exactly who it was that they left out to kind of roam that that southwest side of zone. Um, and they picked up some kills. Um, TXC was shooting at uh, a couple teams that were kind of playing a broken down shack in that area. So it, it was some great some great plays 
from CK there in the end. Oh, absolutely. Um, I did I did catch that uh, CK actually had taken out, or, or maybe another squad, part of Crazy Mob was in one of those shacks that can break down, so they got eliminated. I think they threw a nade into the shack or shot it down. But going into those, those cement shacks, commonly known as the shit shacks, a lot of people are hesitant to do it, but a lot of times you, you send two guys into the shack to anchor a spot like you mentioned uh to me i'm a i'm a big fan of that and you can make some big plays out of those shacks even though it's so tight and ended up working out for ck and it was an awesome win in, in that spot yeah i think the only thing that that stood out to me there in the end was um a, a really nice knock from one of the members of, of txc and, and i think even you know if we were talking to them right now they're gonna wish that they pushed the weasels there um they ended up dying you know to kind of too many angles and stuff and, you know, they were edge of zone, they were in zone, and then that next shift kind of pulled them out. You know, it could have kept them in, so, you know, the push onto the weasels didn't need to happen. But I, I bet they're wishing they played that a little bit more aggressive, took that fight onto the yeah. weasels, wiped them, and then they would have had a chance, um, I think as a three-man, because they lost Tremis earlier on that that kind of northwest flank he was doing towards the warehouse. Um, but they would have had a chance if they wiped the weasels, but... um. You know that you know it wasn't really necessary for them to push that there they had a circle up that was about to happen so um yeah it was really interesting to listen to those guys try to figure out what what the play was they were considering the push we, we heard it on on the, the the astro uh listen in so um that was really the only other thing that that stood out for me what about yourself yeah i think honestly it's sometimes hard to make that move because if the weasels move a little earlier you know knock ck then maybe txc can go down i'm also not sure you like, know what or, or three of your members was. hop in the car and you drive towards the weasels and one of the weasels lasers your entire team you know so it's not it's exactly. not that i play necessarily but it's it's just an option and i think they're gonna wish they did that but um with hindsight yeah. it's a lot easier to to consider it even but um hey we're gonna take a quick break ladies and gentlemen that was just match two of the evening we've got three more to go um in match three we're heading to the dusty desert of miramar so we'll be right back in just Let's a go. minute
Welcome back, everybody, to the Main Gaming Weekly Series. I'm your host, Stento, here with my co-host, as always, Blitz5. Um, and we are dropping in to our third match of the evening. Um, a little bit of a, a switch up. Uh, we have pushed on to a third Arangle. We will get our Miramar situated later on in the evening. But as we are looking at our map here, it is from Zarki down to milta the plane path blitz and lots of people are jumping early this is one of those plane paths that's going to allow lots of people free range and probably the access to their typical drop spots um absolutely this is kind of similar to what we saw game one with a similar flight path for sure yeah absolutely so looking at the plane path we have everybody out here Dubhub dropping early, pretty close to this CE squad, the same squad they just dropped into Severny. We saw them, unfortunately, not able to hold out VK um, on that Severny rotation. Uh, an unfortunate fight at the end there, but this plane path's going to give us why, some, somewhere of a middle first circle, I'm afraid, and I'm, I'm looking around the zone. We know that this our, our team is going to be dropping onto Vigorous all night. It looks like Shanks was able to get one of at least one of the cars from that situation around, yeah. yeah as our first circle circles up similar zone as last time here um with being on the north side but there's a few more teams in this one and it's also touching still rosak area the other one i think was a little bit more north with like severny was almost center there on that initial zone which really brought it up north so this one could come back down low one of the first things i'm noticing for people watching or listening in right now thank you guys for tuning in again for tonight for the debut main gaming weekly series here on kick we're really excited to be streaming on the platform make sure you guys are uh, following up for the future events uh, but one of the things i'm noticing right now is that nobody's really hot dropping yet i mean this is game three normally we we would maybe start to see that uh maybe in game four or game five but again this was third Aaron goal in a row people sort of know what's going on i think people are still kind of i think because we've seen some different teams in the top you know the weasels play second twice i think people probably think they still have a potential to place in the top three here so i think a lot of teams want to try to get that chicken dinner make it to the end and get a lot of kills which you like to see in the competition to me it's always a bummer when some teams fall really behind feel like they can't come back without hot dropping then they're out of the game really quick and then they're even further behind so from a competition or excitement standpoint for people viewing this is exciting because we're going to see a lot of teams still going for the dub here yeah, absolutely. I think the closest thing to a hot drop we have seen is this uh, RR squad dropping close to Vigorous. They lost one member last round. Um, looks like they were able to land on a car there and get it for their squad. So we'll, we'll keep a close eye on this this Vig versus RR. We're going to play one more Arangle um, for the rest of the evening. So so we'll, we'll pay attention to that on our final drop. But phase one has shifted here, Blitz. We're going up to the north again. Severny a decent spot for this CE squad be playing out of um but that water hazard in the middle of the map is much more into play for our later zones here i'm, I'm afraid oh for sure it's gonna it, the circle could easily go to the water and it could have a big impact and again for people rotating you could go around yasnaya but otherwise you're taking a bridge whether it's georgia pole whether it's the center area and, and flipping from strategy i mean we are seeing some teams do early rotations here uh 
VK, which is the Virtual Kings and Vigorous, starting the rotations. Just wanted to point out that we haven't really seen too, too much from K7 yet tonight, Stento. So I'm really inter interested to see if they will change their strategy because they've been kind of going on those wild rotations on the outskirts of the map. So I want to see if maybe they head in a little earlier this match or not. They, they don't seem to be moving quite yet. So I guess they're going to stick to their strategy. But yeah, that, mi that military drop has kind of been uh like a staple of, of their you know long-term success here you know all the military zones they're just dominating um and they really mastered you know how to rotate off of off of the the military island it's something that i've noticed over time that they just are able to do successfully you think it over time you you know might have some troubles trying to get onto the mainland from this island but they seem to do it with no issues Rip. um whether that's on foot over the bridge whether that's taking a boat um, whether that's going separately or all together k7 tries, you know, usually figures out a way um, So to see them have a uh, little to no success in the first two games of a tournament is is something I've not really seen before So we'll keep a close eye on them. This is warhawk and Quayboff, aimbot and qdex these players are all in the same blitz um, So they're gonna put something together here at some point So wow. we know that that's gonna happen at some point. What are we looking at? Uh, right above Rozak vigorous just drove by VK and they shot a tire out of Prodigy's buggy, and he did multiple flips. I thought he was going to get killed there, but he survived. And Gravy picked him up, and now Ghost is returning fire onto Sweezy. Tony actually knocks Ghost with a sniper, though, from down at the compound. So this is turning a little bit more hectic than initially we thought. Ghost is out in the open. Noxie's trying to get some smokes, but Nox is also out in the open. Yeah, Sweezy and Illusion are already on the push here. Ghost is going to get thirsted here. The three man of Vigorous is going to need to do something. It's going to be uh, up to Noxie here. I'm going into his perspective. He's wrapped way down on the edge of zone oh, he here, but spotted. the third party. The dub up third oh, party from the third party is starting to ruin this for him. His his spot was going to be devastating for VK, depending on what he was going to be able to do as a solo from this angle. But Augie from the dub up puts him down below half health. Wow, my hand was literally on my head there. I was in disbelief, but he does catch Sweezy and then pops it off and gets Illusion with a double kill. Make it three, oh, Nazi. Triple, but needs to reload. He's got to take down Tony, Tony here. He needs there. the help from his squad. He, he he needed help from his squad. Tony takes him down, but where is the rest? Of vigorous, it's it's just one member left. Prodigy they, they Gravy aren't far back into the compound there. I I think the third parties I are. I guess they had to though. I think they had to because look, Sweeney spot on the rock. They didn't have anywhere to go, so I guess they had to stay back here. But now you think they would push up and start throwing those throwables with two people knocked? I thought they were gonna. I I thought they would aggressively push to to kind of fig finish off VK, but they must have saw the third party of TXC pushing from the bridge side. Um. Boltman leading the way here with the DP in his hand. He's gonna take Tony down instantly. It's actually Sly with the grenade. Tremis there for the instant thirst. So VK is out. They're gonna. Oh, excuse me. They have one more player. One, where was the one? One last man. Uh, he's rotating towards oh. just nigh and now far away. Um, the final two members of Vigorous are gonna get out of there. Toxic picking up three wow. kills early on in this game, following up a, a, a decent game two last match. I can't crazy. believe that all played out that way. I mean, <laughs> so many third parties happening so fast today, Stenta. Yeah, it's hard it to... seems to be the theme of the day. Once a, uh, a fight breaks out, we're seeing multiple people, sharks in the water uh, type of stuff, blitz, just pulling right up on onto it and, and getting uh, as, as immediately into the fight as uh, they can here. Uh, it's long-range AK bullets from one of the members of TSM. PYM is going to pick up that knock and thirst. And the long-range shots onto Gravy. <laughs> PYM showing how it's done with both the AK and the Mini 14 there. Two quick kills for 20 Squad North. Super unfortunate figures. They have to be frustrated there. Again, they've struggled with losing people on rotations, kind of getting mixed up there. And that's just kind of another situation that happened. Unfortunately, they were trying to rotate early. and It was smart, but then so many other people were rotating early as well that it just ended up not working out for them in the end. Yeah, several teams are, are already centered up in a very comfortable spot we saw team toxic txc just over the water in the bridge they're picking up some kills they're holding a little bit of a 2-2 split they have the gas station and they have this walled granny like this compound, like compound. yeah smart, they've got a split, very powerful split. split there um dubbub's got a couple members to the north side ck are winners of match two are hanging out on the north side of the big reservoir and they've got that dead end compound um, we see ZG Zodiac Gaming doing a very similar rotation to last game. CE found their way out of Severny into a very central spot. 
20 squad north in a very good spot as well main gaming finding their way into shooting range for now which is also going to be a good spot so several teams are going to be comfortable for this first circle up we've got over a minute left until it circles up so we're just going to see you know some long range shots here a couple of teams slowly finding their way into edge but most teams are pretty comfortable for now yeah, I'm not sure if you mentioned, too, the K7 is finally coming in on the very east side. And last time with this zone, they ended up rotating up to Stalbert and running in to Zodiac Gaming ZG. So will we see something like that again? The Weasels are up there at Stalbert this time. So we'll see what happens. Looks like CE might be making a push onto Dub Hub. I think Dub Hub is split here at this small junkyard compound. One's down. Augie gets taken out as well. And they've been eliminated. They weren't split. It was just the last two members of the Dub Hub were hiding out here. Yeah, and I didn't exactly down. see how where when the other two Dub Hub members uh, got lost. I think it must have been early on in that match there. So um Dub Hub out in 16th place. Uh you love to see the aggression. CE uh Capricorn Esports is one of our new newer teams here in the main gaming weekly series so picking up four kills in an early match um and in some very good zone here with a nice split as we see phase one shift to phase two it's pulling towards stalbert and ce in a great spot ck in a great spot um zg also in a very good spot so many teams are gonna have to find their way um kind of through this southwest side of zone blitz oh absolutely i'm just so curious to see where k7 is gonna go also Interesting that two veteran teams getting taken out early tonight, Stento, with so many, you know, a lot of veteran teams here tonight, but then also, like we mentioned a few times, some new teams as well. So it's been really interesting to see how everybody's playing. Yeah, absolutely. Just a, a great mix of veteran players, veteran teams, and, and new players and new teams. So uh, just a main focus of this main gaming weekly series and all of our main gaming events here that we have whether it's a competitive event a casual event or, or a charity based event man we we really do stress that all our events are, are free to join um they're designed to help grow the scene we really want everyone to feel welcome to join any of our events so if you have any questions at all please feel free to to talk up to a moderator ask about it in our discord and our twitter the rotation coming out from crazy mob here shots are ringing out from capricorn esports up with the warehouse up the hill but as I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, these events are made for everyone. We just want to build this PUBG console scene into, um, you know, even bigger and better than it already is. Um, and it starts with people getting involved. So, so please feel free to ask any questions, get involved in any of these events. Um, and with the launch of our LLC, Main Gaming LLC, and our new website here on April 17th, we'll be bringing back a, a dedicated, consistent events calendar um, and much more uh, for the console scene to look forward to. So. Please, again, ask us questions, get involved. Um, these events are for everybody to enjoy. Very exciting times, man, especially for uh, main gaming and the PUBG console scene, for sure. I was watching there as you were talking, the Crazy Mob was kind of rotating. Looked like they were going to maybe crash TSN, but then they split up here. Problems Crazy is in the bunker, and Live and Dreams are back at this small little shack area yeah they lost schmill in that rotation that you're talking about they drove by tsn and, and i believe schmill got knocked out so they're down to just three players um in a little bit of a split now they're gonna have some figuring out to do to get back um as a three man together but uh i'm not sure they're gonna want it to be in this spot that that problems and he's he's center zone but we've seen just some crazy crashes come out onto that bunker it seems to be a popular place that people feel comfortable crashing whether you you do that from above or just full send a car we've seen it already today uh be full sent once or twice um and held down pretty decently by the weasels um but problems is a, is a solo here so he's gonna push out to this tank and into this crater and just kind of hold this as a solo i like i like the play for now um, that is smart it is hard to leave here though which is an issue once you get here it can be hard to leave it so open kind of surrounding it's just trees yeah absolutely now taking a look on the Stalbert Mountain, we have Warhawk leading the rest of Kinetic 7 onto this yeah, they mountain. Fin they finally made it in on the north side. They're behind ZG. Yeah, I think Warhawk just spotted some of the ZG members with the 8x on the mini. And the funny thing is, these guys are so smart. I know that K7 realizes it's the same squad. They just fought them up here last match. They know exactly who they're dealing with. So they're, they're pushing with caution. Warhawk switching a couple scopes with the rest of the squad there as they begin this push. They saw ZG push over the, the, the crest of the hill in the distance here. So Warhawk feeling comfortable to tuck the gun and kind of backfill this Zodiac gaming squad. So 
one They're of our catching Zimbala by themselves here. Yeah, one one of our top squad Zodiac Gaming might get caught off guard here. Uh, Shambala, Ooh. he's watching the backside now. He's got the two X on the barrel with same setup he's got last game, so we know he's familiar with this setup. He's gonna catch Warlock or one of these members soon. He's jumping around. He just hasn't made eye contact with him yet. Jambala's gonna see these guys yet. He just saw Aimbot. He's gonna need to get back to his squad. The rest of K7 is very close by. Warhawks above Jambala. I don't think he knows he's there. Warhawks gonna go for the shots. Drops him. Jambala. And the immediate flush coming in. Yeah, Shambala. The second Shambala saw Aimbot, he knew that this was just a bad place to be. He started to run back, but um k7 is just too smart and too quick they had already pushed on several angles onto yeah, that Warhawk call made out. a great play he pushed up and instead of shooting he just hit at a tree and and waited and it really worked out for them yeah it was a great play the rest of zodiac gaming is is following linkadox out of there I'm, I'm tapping into his perspective to see exactly where they end up they're gonna try to full send wow. something center zone it looks like he's looking for a shack he's gonna take the squad to this shack that center zone and they're gonna play out of this this is gonna be very doable for these guys Straight yeah it's so funny though that they they meet up with k7 and then they both go their separate ways they just bounced on each it's, other it's mutual the respect direction. these are two of the, the biggest powerhouses we have on controller PUBG. you know these guys are just insane and, and as a squad it's it's just it's not something you want to take a, a fight especially early on and you don't need to so they got Absolutely. one kill and you know the rest of them said hey that's k7 we're not gonna take a four on three early game on edge here let's try to get center zone as a three man we'll try and pick up some kills we'll try and keep our first place run going right now um okay. as we saw them pick up some heavy kills in the first match of the evening um so tsn is on the move here on the west side they're getting tagged up from multiple different teams right now pym is actually down to almost half health health excuse me yeah, trying to find a place for them to crash he's lost the tire blitz there you go one member shv oh, is down. Shit down pym already has four kills they have five as a squad they need to find something soon because this car has no gas three tires and about half health so kyu is has taken the lead here they're going to cut the engine and try to find a shack maybe uh, an electrical tower or something in the area here but options are Sai pretty limited in the middle of the field stance i don't know if you saw that he's just stuck with that blown up car his teammates dead so size definitely gonna go down they're gonna <laughs> oh, be down to I two members see him over there that is not that's not a good spot he's still in zone though blitz he centered up a guy uh, he didn't center up excuse me he is in zone for phase four so i don't know if he'll be able to get back with the squad but he is going to be okay for a little bit if he can just survive He's in the middle of the field, though. I think once these smokes go down, I think he's going to be in a tough spot. AFI is actually in such an interesting position. They're split right now, 2-2 two -two split. They're going to pull up on the other two members that are left of TSN over here. It's going to be Baby Joey and Zalady driving by. Baby Joey's got the MK, tries to do drive-by. Omerta with the long there, range. From Omerta. Yeah, at the Granny Complex, Omerta with the SLR wow. headshot onto PYM. Joey is pulling up now. He's got the MK in his hand. He's waiting a little bit second here. He's going to get the reload off. That's Molly here. Molly will, will do the job. The window. Just misses, but I think some of the fire is going to go in. Yeah, those Molly's drop and spread everywhere. So now it's just that one solo member for TSN that got lost um, in rotation who is alive. Now these two members knocked in the building. A nade from Zalodi is going to do the job. Third party's ringing out here, making it a little bit of a, a stressful situation, but Baby Joey and Zalodi gonna handle it like it's nothing. They're gonna get into the shack, get a little bit more loot, um, and probably call the rest of their squad up from the granny complex. They they're might be able to pick up some more kills because there are people south of these guys, Blitz. If you take a look, um, Team 16, that's gonna be the Eno squad, is rotating uh, up the hill and around so uh, unfortunately AFI isn't gonna luck out here and pick up some some kills here They're gonna have some long-range shots, but elsewhere CK is fighting SOB. I'm gonna try to find that uh, That's actually long-range CK is holding down this dead-end compound um, As SOB anymore, is all on foot trying to push into zone. This is not a good situation And unfortunately, I didn't see what happened to K7 here blitz They've only got one kill and Warhawk is alone. So Wow I think they pushed too far out of the zone. CK is about to leave the dead end compound right here. SOB Iceman's up, but he's got one health. He's gonna go down. They're eliminated from the match. So we'll see where CK ends up. 
There's really nowhere for CK to go because if they fill in where ZG is, they're gonna get shot from tacticals. If they go north, there's weasels and problems crazy. If they go south, there's RR. CK's in a tough spot here. And they are using the Jeep to rotate. They might drop directly into to ZG here. That's, oh, that's not where you want to go. I figured this would happen. There is a knock Paul on Apollo Sam. Sam. If they can get the Molly in here, it's going to be Jaeger. He needs to get it in there. He does. He, he doesn't get the gun up in time, though. The tactical gets the double kill hit fire spray. Went on fire. Oh my God. Somehow survives and He's then goes still down. still on fire? Tacticals look like he was on fire, not taking damage there. I don't know where a Linkadox uh, has pushed to the north and taken that other shack. So some mutual damage here might be able to be cleaned up for CK. The console killers won our match two of the evening. They've got two members here and there's nothing. Oh my gosh, the final member couldn't get down the hill. It was bizarre. He needed to get down to those two members that were knocked there. But unfortunately, CK out in ninth. Um, Team 17 is out in 10th at the same time. So what's happening here very quickly? RR trying to find wow. their way down the uh, edge of zone here, but they've lost Brody in the process. It looks like they're going to go back for that revive. That's Wiz uh, starting that revive now. He's got eight seconds. Dude, so that was crazy. Tacticals was on fire. Hit fire spread the rest of CK. And really smart, they sent Linkadox across the way to the other shed. But instead of kind of trying to help out, he might have a little bit. He's still alive on the other side, so they still have somebody in the zone, which yeah. is awesome for them. Yeah, the, the crash was tough. Uh, they, they they got a knock on each team as they pulled up. The molly kind of set everything on fire. Everyone was hip firing everything. Third parties were ringing out. So, you know, it was a, a little bit of a sloppy fight. Um, CK almost was able to dig it out. If they had Bizarre with them, they probably would be back to three strong at that same shack now. Um, trying to figure out how to deal with RR, who's pushing over the top. But Tragic End and Shanks taking this uh, a little bit tentative. They don't know exactly what happened at the shacks, but they don't seem worried about it at all. They must have already cleared this when we weren't watching. They're going to try to push around the east side, south to north, and, and find this dip here. They're really only going to need to worry about uh, Linkadox as the solo in that shack there i'm also catching eno and mg are both four strong and they're running into each other on the west side of the map megan just went down bane gaming could make some big plays here haven't they've seen them got, in the yeah, top five yet tonight they've already got uh four kills on the board it's been a, a definitely a quiet evening for main gaming um but exodia with three medusa with one and i think they've got a knock Onto this Eno squad, but I, I don't know how aggressive they're thinking of playing it. They are in zone here. They got Eno's Negan back up, so they're they're back to four strong. They decided not to push it, but we'll see what they decide here. Main gaming, more of them are in the zone here. I'm surprised main gaming is not trying to wrap up to this warehouse. It's actually empty. If someone was there, they could easily peek down on MG, so they're really weak to the warehouse. I'm surprised they haven't sent someone to kind of see if anybody is there right now. Oh, wow. The MK is starting to ring out from the edge of zone here. AFI is still AFI is feeling three behind strong. Eno. Yeah, it's baby Joey with the MK getting things started off. If you know how to use the MK on auto on console, it can be one of the most devastating things as it's got that ridiculous time to kill on top of the sevens is just so devastating if you hit someone in the head with that for a split second they go down um and baby joey just putting it to work here the long range nade um big from nade fortier to is gonna that push yeah from AFI, big for sure. counter that was huge main gaming should potentially think about sending some people to third party this right now they've actually backed off stento looks like acid might be considered getting in a vehicle but no it looks like Medusa is interested. He is pushing over. I'm not sure what the comms are in that main gaming party, but Medusa is pushing in. He wants a, uh, a little bit of action here. I feel like really good potential for a third party here for sure. Eno's actually trying to make a push on the AFI. Medusa could definitely come from behind here. Maybe Joey just got a wrap. Going ham with the MK, just as Tento mentioned. M Medusa stepped up and he did get one knock, helped out AFI, clean that Eno team up. So great place for Medusa getting involved. AFI doing a great job of holding strong as a three man and taking down that Eno squad. So some big plays here from Baby Joey and the AFI team. Five kills for both of them and main gaming. We're down to our final six teams here. 22 players alive as we cross the 23 minute mark. Um, just some great plays. We love seeing the MK in play here. Um, not much that 
Eno squad could do in between main gaming and AFI there, Blitz. Oh, absolutely. And on the flip side, RR pushed Linkadox in the shed, so ZG officially eliminated from the game in the seventh position, I think, there. So now RR has this whole east side of the map to themselves, but not much to work with. They're in a similar position CK was when they won last game, but I don't think the circle is going to be the same for them. DXC in a similar situation. There's just not a lot of hard cover in this part of the zone center, so it's going to be important to keep those smokes going. Yeah, things starting to pop off on the south side of zone here. TE is pushing up onto AFI. They've already got a knock onto Omerta, so it's going to be up to Baby Joey and Zalodi to make something happen here. I'm going to go into Baby Joey's perspective as he's got that MK, one of my favorite guns to use in the game. He's going to let it rip here. He doesn't connect onto a knock. Excuse me, he does. He takes Dextro down easy. Gets a double. On Omerta and Zalady, this is a newer team, I think, or a team that I'm not familiar with, a team Excessive Gaming. Joey's still putting in work with with this um, MK in his hand here. He might be able to get Zalody up. This one final member up for TE, Team 19. It's going to be long range RR, From Tragic Tr End, picks RR. up that kill and, and takes wow. out Team 19 in sixth place. Baby Joey's backpacking his teammate Zalody into the next smoke. Is it going to be enough for that revive? I think they're going to have time to get it off. It's going to be very close. MG Dowdy is slowly almost. pushing into that warehouse above them too. So Zalodi's going to need to push off this edge almost immediately when he gets Zone, up. I think, yeah, he's, he does get up. Zone's not on him. He's going to be able to push in. But will they get spotted? Main gaming is focused elsewhere. Yeah, it's going to be very so funny, interesting. Main gaming has been spending so much of their time looking east instead of looking south. They could have potentially picked up a few kills there on the south side. I'm still in Baby Joey's perspective. He loses Zalodi to Boatman, who's been just uh, using that DP effectively all evening. I love to see people using the DP. Joey's going to push up with the red dot on the MK. Clean up a knock from long range on the Dolly. They're going to need to look out. Baby Joey knows how to work this MK. He puts another one down. He has two more members to deal with. He's going to get Exodia as well. He's going to drop into the warehouse. This man is absolutely deadly force to be reckoned with with any gun in his hand, Blitz. Forget about it if he gets an MK. Absolutely. TXC is actually trying to surround Baby Joey right now. They have Boat on the bottom, Tremi to the east. So they're definitely going to be tr watching out for him because they don't want him to leave this warehouse with the MK in his hands. Actually, right now, TXC is really the only team in the zone. Main Gaming is stuck on kind of the north side now. They lost the warehouse. Weasels have to leave the compound. RR have to move with very little cover, just grass and open field here. That was such a good push by Baby Joey because he saw uh, Boatman take down one of his teammates with the DP and he didn't really realize how spread TXC was. So he decides to take make the safe push up towards the warehouse and it kind of just lucks out for him that uh, the Weasels got a knock onto one of main gaming. Oh, and the Weasels are hard pushing main gaming here, Blitz. It's going to be an effective three-man crash directly onto Sizzle and Acid Burn. They had nothing they could do about it. And now the four-man, Baby Joey's still working now. He took down jo uh, Jolly instantly with that MK. He's going to need to get a heal off. Fnatic's is trying to push here. Zones coming in. Nades are going to come out from the top side. to get side. a nade through the window. Puts him down weak. I think they're going to be able to get this revive off. I'm going to get a little bit of an aerial view here. They already got the revive off onto Jolly. Nades and Molotovs are being thrown into this warehouse. Oh my gosh, it hits the window. Prodigy is on fire with the friendly fire, literally. <laughs> oh my I gosh. from the Weasels. They were trying to get on this roof from the tank here. They're actually smoking baby joey now lots of mutual destruction going on down here i didn't exactly see how rr got chopped in half but the final two members go down to sly and tremis uh they're gonna reverse this finally drop a takes down baby joey and now it's a 4v3 excuse me a 4v4 yeah, once they get sly up here this is going to be a full 4v4 both like tremis are RR already waiting stuck. Tremis starts it off with a nice little uh, M4 spray straight to the headshots on Genetics there. It's now a four on three. I'm not sure they're going to be able to get Genetics up here. Boatman and Tremis just need to wait for the final two members of their squad to, uh, to arrive here and they can play this aggressive. They're playing it very patient. Boatman's on the edge of the warehouse now, kind of just holding his spot. That DP is a tough gun for this situation because you can't really work it unless Jolly. you're crouched. 
Nox are going out on both sides here. Blitz. Sly takes down Jolly. Jolly takes down Tremis. It's up to Prodigy and Droppa for the Weasels. Droppa takes down Sly. He took the, the two v two here. He took the MK off of Baby Joey and makes it work. It's down to two v two, just like you said. Oh, Kova is actually so far back. He can't really help out too much. It's just both. But Weasels are pinned in the shed. But Droppa, Droppa gets a nasty oh, knock on both there. Oh, Droppa is making situation. it work. Droppa is working it. They've only got five kills in the squad here, but they know where the final member is for Toxic. And these final members are going to start to bleed out. There's another kill. Six. It's up to uh, Kova here on this shack. He does. He drops he Prodigy. 1v1 versus Droppa here. And he's Down got the cover. Health. He's going to go for the stun. I think that stun might hit. And I don't think it was successful enough. Droppa flanking around to the side here. Going to be barrel versus barrel. Drop him with the drop shot blitz. A little bit of left peek, and then he hits the ground and gets nothing but headies with that barrel spray. What did we just see? Wow, he hit him with an okie doke there. He popped in and out and then popped out with the drop <laughs> shot again. I thought, honestly, Kova was going to take that. Valiant effort from them. They come down in second place with 12 kills for the name, but the Weasels finally weasel it out stento second place back-to-back -back times and then this time they come in first place for the third game which is awesome and they come down with nine total kills and then rounding out the top three is afi with eight kills of their own uh very successful game for those three teams Sento. we've seen them a lot kind of in the top five area uh so ggs to them yeah absolutely we'll hit our um split screen intermission here for a second and, and break down that match but as you said the weasels taking first place with, with nine kills following up uh two second places so so we'll wait to the the scoreboard kind of tells the tale but i think that's got to be our first place team right now probably followed by zodiac gaming who just had an 18 kill win to start the match yeah exactly um, that was huge for them we've got two more matches one on miramar and one on Arangel. um but what else was standing out to you in that in that match that the Weasels just took down there? Really interesting situation. I really feel like main gaming, not to call them out, but kind of dropped the ball there or maybe just got stuck in between the two teams because the warehouse was open. Then they stopped moving, let kind of the Weasels leave and just crash on them, uh, which was kind of unfortunate there. But honestly, it was sort of a shit show at that warehouse with so many teams surrounding it. But allowed the Weasels to come in and honestly... Uh, Toxic Gaming could have surrounded that warehouse and just waited for the Weasels to leave, but the Weasels hit some really big shots, and in that moment, they really clutched it up. So I, I think, honestly, like the ball was in Toxic's court there. They had more of the zone, um, and the, the Weasels really stepped up there. That's, that's for me, that's what I uh, kind of took from that last game. What about yourself, Sento? Yeah, I mean, the Weasels have kind of just been, you know, tr true to their name. We haven't seen them in too many fights we haven't seen them you know, racking on, right? up yeah. too many kills, um, but a second place, a second place, and a first place with nine kills now in these first couple games. So they, they truly do know how to get their way to the end game. I'm familiar with all of these players on the Weasels. They're, they're, they're veteran players. They know how to shoot, um, and clearly they've got an IGL on the squad there that, that knows how to get them um, into the end game. So we, you know we've got a, a new team to keep an eye on, um, and it's Team 18. That's the Weasels. Um, and we, we got to, again, keep a, a lot of focus on those guys because they were not on my radar um, bef before this uh, first three games here. Absolutely. I mean, they, they definitely right are rotating well and playing the circle well. And that's not an easy circle to play. And it, it, it was a little bit different than the last one, which was, you know, in the same spot. So they definitely navigated it well. And even TXZ, they're in the second place twice in a row there, right? So definitely another team that's going to be climbing up the leaderboards with just the position points alone yeah absolutely well that was match three of the evening was supposed to be on miramar match four is now heading directly to that dusty <laughs> desert miramar yeah. and we will be right back after a short break ladies and gentlemen um and we'll show you the scoreboard that is updated to this point along with um some statistics so stay tuned we'll be right back with the next lobby in just a second
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to match four of the weekly series. We are running a test event for our full relaunch as an LLC on April 17th. We'll be back every Monday from then on. For now, we appreciate everyone that is tuning in. Um, we are going to be here for not only this uh, event every Monday, but a, a full calendar of dedicated events will be available on our website as soon as that is ready on the 17th. But for now, Blitz, match four is underway. We got a plane path from down near prison all the way up to Oasis. Teams are already dropping out. What's taking your eye so far? Well, yeah, plane path splitting the map in half. So very basic plane path here. So most teams should be able to go where they want to, unless somebody was planning on dropping in Impala or uh, Campo Militarp there. But most teams looks like they've dropped on the center or bottom half of the map. It looks like we have a few teams in the Los Leones area here. And Dubhub kind of took their patented. Uh, they have a very bizarre drop on Miramar where it's, it's below Los, Leon Los Leones. That's a drop from... Uh, he slaps uh, uh, picked that drop out a long time ago. I remember him talking about that. And this zone, very interesting. Pretty rare zone, Stento, actually. This is including the prison island, Valley Del Mar. I, Blitz, I hope it goes down there almost. so much. Such a rare zone. I mean, you know what's so funny is everyone talks about Minas. There's actually two Minases, but who goes to the other Minas? Minas Del Sur, almost nobody. And uh, it's funny that this, we're seeing this zone in the comp play today, which is kind of fun to see. Unbelievable in the kill feed. We're seeing some knocks. I didn't notice that we had two teams drop Hacienda. It looks like uh, Fine, Team Toxic well. is falling. We have knocks on both sides here. Two on two now. It looks like Pride has a shot. I'm going to tap into his perspective. He's already lost Bowman. He's the only one up now. This all unfolded a little too quickly. Wow, can't believe they decided to hot drop here. TXC Toxic. Going for the toxic play, and Eno lost one of their members, but they're going to be able to get the other two up. Kind of a risky play from TXC, who has to be, uh, you would imagine, top 10, top 5 right now. I, I hate to see that TXC has been so consistent today. Uh, unfortunate. Oh, they're just battling to, to kind of claim their hot job. I think they're, you know, TXC is, is a somewhat newly formed, formed team from, from some of the dub hub. So I think they're kind of still claiming some of their drops. This Eno squad, as far as I'm concerned, is, is somewhat new. It's definitely a new squad for our main Gaming Weekly series. Um, and we really don't play that many Miramars. So unfortunate for TXC. They were so consistent so far in this tournament, and that's really going to end up hurting them. But Eno has also been involved in some end games, so it's going to be interesting to see where Eno is after this match because they picked up four kills early on. They do have a ridiculous rotation along with everyone else in this match. For sure. I love seeing some of the teams. Um, I'm going to be watching the Weasels rotating because they've had a lot of successful rotations into the zone. Still looking for K7 to have a big game. We saw them get that early knock, but then nothing else really happened. They dropped in the old GT drop, which was made by Professor. So it's kind of funny. We're seeing a team without Professor and without Destroya go to the GT drop outside of Los Leones. I, I like seeing that stuff because we've been following the comp scene for so long now that you still see the remnants of old members and leaders of other teams affecting the newer newer teams drop locations and stuff like that which is interesting to me. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty awesome. Hey, maybe we'll see some of those players coming back as we get a little bit more consistency with our events, but for now we had a packed field and a packed registration for this event. It almost filled up in about 20 minutes, I think Blitz. That's um, amazing. Incredible, man. Yeah, but all with the main gaming events. I mean, whether we're doing community events or these events, I mean, they the registrations fly off the shelf just so fast. Yeah, with that being said, we really do want to make sure that, <coughs> excuse me, anyone that feels like they want to join any of the events, all of the events are free to join, whether it's a competitive event, a community event, um, or one of our charity based events. We really do. You know, want to just stress that they're all free to join. They're welcome to anybody to participate in. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask myself, Blitz, anyone on the main gaming team. We have a ton of different content creators who are always available to help here. Um, and whether that's in our Discord, our Twitter, or in one of our live streams, please don't hesitate to ask any questions about any of these events. Absolutely. So many things going on and so many things to come here um, in 2023. <laughs> We're seeing a little bit of a three to four team clash here. Unfortunately, K7 
loses Warhawk, who must have been doing a little bit of scouting for his squad. I can't see exactly what happened to his car. It looks like it crashed he, or flipped or yeah, something. He, and he he, uh, he was going down this hill. He cut the engine and then eventually got spotted, though, and definitely was by himself. Main Gaming also getting tagged up here in this area as teams kind of figure out where they're going. Yeah, this is such a tough first zone when everyone has to pull themselves across the full map of Miramar into this, uh, you know, bottom left corner. So we're going to see some early action. There's, there's no denying it. There's no avoiding it. CK is slowly rotating behind K7 here. So we're going to see a super crowded right eastern edge over here by main gaming by TE. The dub hub's already got a little bit of a split here on both sides. The island and uh the main chunk oh, of land good, so good there's a there. lot going on that. over there as k7 and as ck slowly make their way to this just so many teams have a long rotation team eno we just saw them wipe toxic on the north side they're still over at hacienda looting up they must not be happy with their loot they're going to take a late rotation um and the weasels heading towards junkyard doing the same rotation as k7 as ck they're just a couple thousand meters behind blitz so this is going to be a really messy zone i have a, I have a feeling that some teams are never going to find uh, their way into this first zone yeah with, with so meta oh here we go early fighting from uh dub pub takes out <laughs> funny name there trades come in and both members are going down from mik and augie unfortunately i was worried about that of, of them getting eliminated here <laughs> yeah that 2-2 two -two split is awesome early on but it's not awesome when you get crashed by a four man and that's really the only risk that you need to worry about is that team's rotating if they can identify that you're a broken team that crash is on all day you know crash a two man as a four man and, and you're, you're gonna win that nine out of ten times and, and te is just kind of putting that on display right now yeah, for sure. And something I find kind of interesting, well, first of all, K7 is going to come right on the bottom side of the map here. Um, will TE get some shots on them? So many teams are going for these wild rotations when if they actually just drove in from the north side, it would be clear. So many teams are kind of going for that, like, meta, really wide rotation. So I'm over on the bridge near Valdemar. It looks like Gravy is causing some issues for this this um, Capricorn Esports squad. Oh, we just got caught by Fung Chu. Yep, Fung Chu takes him down. Prodigy was pulling up to help, but the timing was just awful with Mr. Monty and Frisky there hanging out on both edges of the bridge. He didn't have a chance. So vigorous. We've discussed it a number of times, Blitz, but they just they like they they lose people early on too much. And when when they're four deep end game, we, we know how much they win, but it's just such an issue for this vigorous squad that you know, ever since our last event back in November, I remember talking about Vigorous losing people early. So it, you, you hate to see that continuing to trend and, and hopefully they yeah, can kind of um, figure that out. Yeah, I don't know if they're getting too aggressive early on or, or aren't don't have a set place that they're rotating to, but definitely seems like they, they just keep getting caught on rotation there, which is unfortunate. Sometimes it seems like Stento, right? You want, I'm personally a fan of having the team almost have their own vehicles or at least 2 2. But sometimes when you're having trouble losing people like that, you almost want to go 2 2 or have everyone in the same car and clown cart just so you know everybody's together. I mean, it's risky, but when they keep losing members, different areas of the map and stuff like that, sometimes it is better to ultimately stay together. Yeah, absolutely. Most teams have found uh, their way in. There's there's about three teams on the north side near Power Grid, Picado, Monte Nuevo finding their way in. But I'm looking at the map right now. There aren't too many teams close to one another. Some teams are trading shots as others rotate. CK just kind of used the beach and found their way all the way through. They kind of lucked out because the two men of Dub Hub died to that um, team excessive hanging out by the bridge. Team excessive has been picking up lots of kills over there kind of uh, staked their claim first on that southeast side of zone and it really paid off for them i'm gonna actually check in i believe they've picked up like six kills already excuse me just three Ooh, ck just rolled up on k7 right here they kept going i thought they were gonna stop and take the open compound but three members of ck pulled up here wow One that's gonna be a good molly back and, and what just happened aimbot is down so k7's already lost warhawk and now they've lost aimbot and ck as a foreman have just pulled up onto quavoff and on to Qdex. So this is just yeah, not, not was at the shed at the intersection and got taken out, I think, from Team 14. Obviously, CK, they probably saw Aimbot just go down. They might not know that they're already missing a member before that. Bazaar's gonna be here. So now this is a 4v2 push. 
Never easy to push the long building, but they're eventually going to be able to surround this building. Some third party shots coming in from Team 14, which is Virtual Kings there on top of the hill across the street. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious if they know who they're dealing with yet or not. Uh, K7, again, Quavoff and Qdex are, are two players that you don't push recklessly a, a, as a four man. So they're going to need to figure this out um, with a little bit of precision and a little bit of patience because Qdex and Quavoff, again, are, are fully capable of taking down a, a four man squad by themselves here. So you can see TK kind of taking it slow. So I, perhaps Smart. they're they're aware that, that this is... um maybe a little bit of a broken K7 squad and they're playing it slow. Ranger Jr. is kind of acting as the tip of the spear here, trying to poke around and figure out exactly where these guys are. He's in the building. He's not messing around with the hallway that I believe Qdex is holding, but be very interesting to see what these guys are talking about. I don't think uh, K CK is one of our squads um, on our Astro is listen in list right now, but you do wonder this door is probably going to open up some issues the stunner is out and there you go quavon takes Ranger him down with the down. barrel qdex was there for the backup now we have a three on two i'm getting an aerial view and seeing exactly how k7 is going to deal with this quavon the word he uses all the time is active man he's not going to waste this knock this is their time to act he's stunned right now qdex is pushing his way through the house they're into the main Smartly corridor though, now yep. ck blocked off a lot of the rotations for quavon so I don't think they were able to really make a move off that knock. They're going to get Ranger back up. He's back to 75% health. Quavoff moved into the shack to the west of the long building. Yeah, a good molly in the center corridor prevented Qdex from pushing in the building. And a couple stuns hit Quavoff, so he couldn't really uh, get his bearings to figure out his way around. He initially tried to push uh, around the north side of the building, but was met with, with some fire. Qdex has a shoddy in there, man. This is... This is so, so sticky wow, for CK. Okay. They they know exactly what they're dealing with now. And and, and again, Qdox and Quavov is not someone you can deal with lightly. It looks like Zodiac Gaming, uh, one of our top teams here, just picked up a bunch of kills and perhaps a wipe on Team SOB. We'll team, see Team SOB in our final match of the evening out in 15th place. The Dub Hub elsewhere picking up some kills. This is a little bit wow, of a stall. On weasels. Yeah, there's a little Weasel bit of a stall. This, members. Yeah, this is this is our first place team. We have to snap over to this. The two man of the dub hub, Wabaku and Onyx, wow. take down the four man Weasels. These guys finished first, first, and uh, excuse me, second, second, and first in the first three matches, ladies and gentlemen. Big loss that on is Miramar a for the Weasels. Huge loss for the Weasels. It was only a two man dub hub that took them apart. But back up the hill, just a little bit away, a couple hundred meters, we still have Kinetic 7 trying to deal with the console killers. Jaeger's on and the I roof. I want to point out for people uh, listening or watching that the circle left the island, so this circle is going to be staying on the main area here. Just as a heads up, because we have been in the action for a while here. Looks like Jaeger's going for a nade, but misses. He's finally on top of the building, but again, these third-party shots are not making it easy. Yeah. What do you do here if you're if you're CK Sento? Do you keep the kind of patience up here, or do you get aggressive and try to get K7 out? I, I think it has to do with who they're dealing with. I I know they know that this is a broken team, but but Quavoff, K7, Qdex, all all of these names they demand respect. You can't just you can't be reckless. The second they opened the door and tried to push Blitz, these guys were dropped instantly. Two angles from Qdex and Quavoff put one of these CK members down instantly. You see the, the respect that K7 demands, even as a two-man. So typically, you want to get rid of a two-man, a short squad on the edge of zone. You want to be aggressive and get them down with numbers, but it's just not something you can do with these guys. They're such skilled players that, you know, your first player is going to get dropped quick, and then you're not really going to know what to do. So a Jaeger's playing the roof. The third parties are limiting his ability to really play the peak of that roof. Um, and this edge is going to be a real puzzle for these two. We've been here for a while, but it's just so interesting to see this two-man deal with a four-man on the edge of zone. TK, one of our top teams as well, have taken home a chicken dinner already tonight. Look, We're playing oh, for $1,000 here left tonight. the compound. He's on the wall there. They're trying to get into like a, gate, a gatekeepy position, I think, but it's, it's, it's good plays because eventually the dub hub's going to get involved and, and they're going to have to move off that side. So... Getting out of the compound as long as you're not going to get third party is a great play. And I'm in Qdex's perspective Ooh. right now, watching him play the low the, side. Bizarre. 
Bizarre looks like he might be getting ready for a push with Ranger on to Quavoff. They might have said that Qdex is out, so it might be the time to push Quavoff. He's going to leave the building. He got spotted, though, from Coma in the two-story. Quavo got back into the building, so some trickery from Quavoff. I was worried about the dub hub wrapping behind CK, but now they're going above CK here. They just got out. If someone gets on the roof, dub hub might have a sight line onto them. So now they have to watch out for that. We've been here a while, but I'm going to take a look at my map. It's VK, Virtual Kings, that have some good sight lines just ringing out shots. That's Tony, our damage leader. Bizarre's, Bizarre's making a push on QDOX right now. We're going to see fighting within the next second here. S12K comes out trying to get the instant flush, but can Koma stop it? He can't. Koma's on top of QDOX. Quavoff takes out Jaeger just like Sento was saying. These oh, are not coming Koma easy. with the big knock. Koma with the knock. There's onto QDOX. And it's just Quavoff left. Ranger Jr. gets it done. They did lose Bizarre. Jaeger's knocked. They're going to get back to three strong here. So, yeah. Pop's rolling in as well for the third party. It's so funny. As soon as Sento says, let's move away. The fight after being here for minutes, the push finally comes in. Now Onyx and Wabaku are here. Nades are going to come in for Wabaku. But third party from VK has him what below half health. Parkour grabs the roof. He doesn't know exactly what is going on here. A fight just broke out. But the third party is making it difficult to really get your bearings. Onyx and Wabaku for the dub hub. Continuing to tear through broken squads on the edge of zone. They just wiped a full weasel squad. And now they've taken down one of the members from console killers. That's Koma going down uh, to Onyx. And again, Wabaku would be able to get more involved here if it wasn't for the third parties Ooh, to the north. I thought that nade was going to damage Jaeger, but it doesn't. Now they're both on the edge of blue phase four Sento. So this looks like this might be a disaster for all teams here. Zone just shifted north and not many teams are in it. So many teams need to push that we're going to see some fighting on the outside of zone with ZGRR and VK. These teams are going to be screwed right now. Phase four shift again. I don't see any live vehicles here. Jaeger goes down as he tries to run from the zone. Onyx and Wabaku are going to be in the zone here with Ranger Jr. pushing up. He lays down with the barrel. He's going to catch Wabaku here. <laughs> Didn't see him lay down at all. So just tons of mutual destruction going on on the edge of zone here. Neither of these teams really are going to be able to do anything at this point. So it's about finding this final kill. Ranger Jr. is looking for it. He's not going to find Onyx. Onyx might be able to grab a bunch of first aids and find his way into zone here. We've been on this edge for too long, though. let us it, it looks like a fight's about to break out here. The Virtual Kings are pushing on to main gaming. They have Team Perfect Eno just here. to the north side. I'm going to get over to that perspective. It's Tony leading the way for Virtual Kings. Drop sizzle like a bad habit. Return shots from Medusa do knock Sweeney. And Acid Burn knocks um tony there so some good trades going out and it's just third parties now from te and too many other teams starting to get some knocks onto acid burn and the virtual king so there you go vk with a good push onto mg there but mg got two members holding out in the shack here they don't feel safe enough to go get those revives but well they're in a valley they're surrounded by a few teams and they were getting third party from a team from pretty far distance so it's tough for them to leave this shed but they're getting the smokes out will they try to go for a potential revive here looks like they're going for acid burn this is exodia trying to make a play it's a little quiet now they might have a chance to do it sizzles alive as well nade comes in though and takes out wow exodia the revive was being downtown. baited by team eno it's great plays Wow. Exodia had the revive going on acid burn. Sizzle's gonna bleed out too. So it's just Medusa there. Unfortunately, we aren't going to see uh, a revive happen here. Uh, and long range continues to be a factor here. It's Team Excessive just playing such a nasty third party on all of these shots. They've got seven kills already, Blitz. Ow, we definitely missed that oh. with some of our. Uh... Some good shots from Yeezy. Almost put Eno uh, Verbital down, but that uh, mutant actually allows him uh, to get the knock that I believe the blue zone got. So TE didn't get off this hill quick good. enough, and they're going to actually pay for it. Two members are going to die. It's just up to Torch um, and on hell here. Yeah, and Vexro got knocked from the other side there. On hell coming up with the scar.
they still have vexro yeah they might have comms from vexro they know exactly where max is the star is not the close range gun you want and it actually comes back to bite him verbal uh excuse me verbal over the top gets that final kill onto torch so Eno picking up some good kills here we haven't been talking about him very much but they've got nine kills here blitz uh verbal is trying to get max up He's got the smokes down, but there's so many third parties looking at this that it's making it quite difficult. I believe Max is going to bleed out here. Yep, there yeah, you go. They've been kind of playing a game similar to the Weasels, where they've been sort of making it to the final 10 teams. Not the kind of quiet gameplay, but if they have some some uh, good games, where well, they got nine kills here and another good game in the last match, they could definitely work their way up the leaderboard. Blitz, Baby Joey and AFI is fighting a, a weird battle on the edge here on the west side. Baby Joey is using the longhouse to his advantage, but... Um, this Capricorn esports uh, e team has this weird ridge to play with, and they're pushing Joey. The rest of AFI esports yeah, uh, is coming me. into a long building. AFI two members in the warehouse. Joey's by himself, trying to hold the second floor. Molly's are coming in, trying to watch the door. Push just came in. He had to walk into the fire. He's going to go down from Frisky there. Team couldn't get over to help him. Yeah, that is such a tricky place to try to hold down with the massive ridge on the west and south side that kind of wraps oh, this entire this compound. Out zones coming in and they both need to leave and they're being watched by tsn 20 squad north a tsn is in just licking their chops up here Chops, blitz absolutely. drooling on each they other just water just headsets dripping with drool just and, and see uh, capricorn esports doing a great job on the edge here it's feng chu that takes down zaloni with the ace it's a new gun that we oh my oh god my, with a nasty double kill on the monkey and frisky there he's gonna get the double flush of carrying two more points for his team trying to go for this quick first aid here why zone's coming in this is phase five though stento so it's still gonna be hard for them to lose but there's not gonna be as many points available for tsn oh, now oh, light oh, with the triple getting the rest of ce eliminated feng chu, right feng chu knew exactly where he was blitz but he couldn't get the angle um an afi uh, uh phase light i believe maybe pops out of the corner there with the barrel and that wins versus ace close range every time the thing is it's not really gonna matter in the long run because uh tsn is not gonna let light out of here yeah i think if i'm light i just keep first dating see how long it can last yeah but then just go down the zone and, and deny tsn the point there for sure i think that was a good play light clutching up there that was that was awesome to watch great gameplay from both teams yeah, absolutely. This is games thinned out rather quickly here, Blitz. We're down to five teams, 16 players as we approach the 23 minute mark. And it looks like really only ZG, uh, one of our first place teams, kind of hanging out in the center zone. They've lost wow. only Linkadox. They've picked up four kills and they're just kind of laying low here. They're not in a great spot, uh, but they are center zone. So they're going to hold this down. It's a very small dip for a three man spotted by the wrong person and, and it could be game over, but. They're going to hold tight there. This is a veteran squad. They know how to play and they know how to shoot. So they're going to use just that small area. Try to find themselves end game and, and then strike when the time is right. Oh, for sure. And I, I want to point out that MG was able to get Exodia up. So there's two of them still in that shack. Oh, wow. But they're in the valley and they're out of zone now. And they're going to have Zone is coming up. in slowly. They have the whole crazy mob to their north which is going to make it tough to move in but they do have this valley and rr and and uh, the crazy mob are going to be fighting each other so they might be able to sneak in through this valley and now third party coming in tsn is trying to get some long range shots on the crazy mob crazy mob spotted mg instead of going through the valley mg's trying to go to the west i don't think that was the rotation yeah, it was going to be probably really tough for these guys either way, but they're really in the wide open to Crazy Mob here in RR as well. Probably has a little bit of sight lines on them as well. It's not going to be anything that Exodia can do. Wiz is waiting yeah, there with the Groza. There. His teammates got an MK. Only one kill for Rico's Roughnecks, but we're down to our final four teams. Two four-mans and uh, two three-man splits. This is probably one of the most loaded endings we've seen so far in terms of player count-wise. Pretty much everybody's got a full team except for Team 11, as you mentioned. 
ZG is playing this very tight. They're literally laying down in the middle of the zone. I think they want to wait for a few knocks to come down so they can push in one direction because right now they're in the middle and they're sort of unsafe. TSN Caillou moved into a, an interesting spot. I'm kind of in just a sky view seeing all this third party. It looks like Crazy Mob is actually getting the worst or the short end of the stick here. They're getting shot from RR and TSN. Sometimes one team just gets focused a little more than the other, and, and Crazy Mob has to kind of eclipse this hill. They're not, they're gonna run out of cover, but Phased Crazy, I don't know if you see this, Stento, is making a rotation, and if he goes unheard, might be able to sneak up on TSN uh, SHV. Yeah, he, he is going to be able to sneak up. It's just a matter of what he can do. The rest of his team is just in an ah. absolute firing line. The SKSs are ripping. That's going to be problems Too going down. He's, he's behind them, but he's going to have a ton to deal with. Yeah, if he was only here, you know, a minute or two earlier, but uh, obviously he, they probably would have heard him if he, if he went any faster. Looks like a throwable came up. I don't know how they know he's there. They I'm not sure they must him. I don't know how they I, saw I, I him I was now. worried that they heard him right at the last second there So it's possible I they see. heard him at the very last second Because I, I, I know they was in the distance there So TSN doing a really good job of cleaning up here We're down to our yeah. final three teams TSN's a full four man A three man for Zodiac Gaming And a three man for Rico's Roughnecks Ooh, Rico Roughnecks had a great smoke line here. I I'm sure TSM was skeptical because they didn't get the flush, right? There was no insta So they were probably wondering where that last member was and had their spidey sense tingling a little bit here. RR using a good smoke. Tragic and trying to continue that line so they can get to this wall here to the left. It could be interesting if Tragic, if RR smokes left and ZG flanks right, TSN could end up getting shot from both directions and end up getting eliminated here. Um, we'll see what happens. It really comes down to who ZG ends up from this angle. They, they literally are playing a weird game. They're, they're snaking out still with just three teams left. Yeah, I'm taking a look at the map, and TSN has just got an insane split on this zone here. So ZG, who have been laying low for a long time, are still in that same spot. It's just going to be a matter of if TSN can, can avoid the Nox here. They are just fully fragging out, and there you go. Nox being traded out. Tragic end, and um, Shanks are down. It's just Wiz over there with the Groza. The revive is going to happen pretty quickly onto the CSM member, and Shiv has already gotten a knock onto Apollo Sam. So it's a four on three, and one is already knocked. So now it's a four on two. Shiv has got to be careful here because Tacticals is on the low side. The revive has already come out onto that low side. Tacticals Ooh. with the great flank takes Shiv down and just like that flips this fight back onto its head it's a three on three instantly and they have the one solo to worry about what is Wiz gonna do he's kind of clearing his high left side first this isn't gonna be too big of a factor in this fight uh tacticals is calling the rest of zg over to this side and we have a three on three on this side it's, it's gonna be a, a very important to, to notice that the solo is still involved nades are ranging out onto the zodiac gaming squad both members are down to one shot and I think I think uh, our Wiz is going to be a bigger thorn for TSN, kind of as I predicted there a little earlier, just because of his position. And he's got the Garoza with a four time, so this could play a big factor. Right now, TSN does have more of the zone in their favor. The Groza of the solo really is the X factor. TSN have a dominant split here. We know they can shoot. We've seen them long ranging all night, but ZG is on the receiving end this time. They're in the edge of zone for phase eight here, but when this circles up, phase nine is our final circle. So we'll we'll see exactly how ZG works their way off this edge. And again, that solo is something we will keep an eye on. But for now, a little bit of the waiting game. One minute until this blue zone touches up, and we'll know exactly where we're heading. For sure. ZG's just locked in here all together on this side. I'm going to check. Let's do a smoke check here. Looks like ZG, unless this is a spectating glitch or bug, which does happen on console. They don't appear to have any smokes left, Sento. So that could be a huge downside for them. TSN looking like they have over 10 smokes between the squad. Zodiac Gaming have six kills. Apollo Sam leading the way here. Ooh, a little bit of friendly fire from tacticals in the backside there. 
They don't need to move yet, but they're going to have to soon. Paulo Sam sees pretty Ooh. focused on the solo, too. They seem to know exactly where that solo is. Chambala's moving up and trying he to get some nades move. on it. We've but seen Chambala rocking the... That was huge. Yeah, we've seen Chambala uh, rocking the 2x all day on these guns. So we'll see what he can do with it on the M4. We've seen him with a barrel most of the evening so far. Phase 9 is here, Blitz. This is our final circle up. Strap it in. Here we go. Wiz has got to move. Is Sai going to focus left on ZG or is he going to look right for Wiz? They're all pushing right. He's kind so of in a little bit of a dip, though. This 3v3 Nate is going to happen. PYM. He's low hell ship all with the push. He lays down blocking the shots. Wow, there are so many stuns and so much going on on this side. A little bit of a double team is going to happen for Shambhala. He takes down KYU. Shambhala gets the double. Oh, Tactical takes help down the PYM. The, the help double this double came kill. just in time. They can't locate the final member for TSN. It's just going to be PSY. Takes down Paulo Sam. Gets the thirst. Tacticals and Shambhala need to deal with them. Okay, now it's nine kills for Zodiac Gaming. Shambhala and Tacticals clean the rest of this team up. <laughs> Tacticals with a big play there, getting the two kills, last two kills on TSN. It's Wiz in a 1v1 versus Shambhala. Good peek out, and then Tacticals wraps around and gets the final three kills there, ending with 10 total kills for Zodiac Gaming in the fourth match of the night. That was just great plays from Zodiac Gaming there. They're going to pick up that chicken dinner again with 10 kills. RR, just one kill in the second place. And rounding out our top three is 20 Squad North. They had nine kills. So, quickly switching back to intermission here, Blitz. While we set up the final match of the evening, what's... um. For me, it was just... You, you saw some real good patience from from a top team that loves to frag out heavy. We saw them get 18 kills and a chicken dinner in the first game, um, but they lost Linkadox early there. They all went prone in like a, a center dip in, in the center of the zone there and, and yeah, laid there maneuver. until there was three teams left. And then they pop up, do what they do, get some kills, clean up, work together as a squad to take specific fights um, and maneuver that Northeast edge there to take down um, TSN and then to deal with the solo two on one making sure that they didn't give him you know a couple 1v1s both challenging at the same time so just some really good patience out of um out of that zg squad is is what stood out for me in that match and, it, and it's gonna probably pull them back up top so I, I think they were in first to start in the first couple of matches and i think that they mm -hmm. fell out with a couple of of slow games on, on a wrangle there and i think that that's gonna pull them right back into it but um what was something that, i guess that that was on your mind about that match there yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a firm believer of, like, the kills come at the end, so I'm totally with you that it's smart. Zodiac had such a nice game or such a big game, one, that they if they play smart and go for the position points and just keep a consistent kill count going, they're, they're going to be in a great spot. TSN and TXC kind of in a similar situation where both those teams are so aggressive but kind of keep coming in second and third place just off on the position there. And really, I just thought it was amazing that Zodiac made some really smart plays, especially without any smokes there. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, just great, great plays with another tough zone. A lot of these zones we've seen today haven't had a lot of compounds in them, so it's just been a lot of openness. So it just comes down to maneuvering, smokes, angles, rotations, flanks, and all that stuff. And uh, definitely some great gameplay for the console FPP competitive scene for sure, man. So GG's to everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's just match four of the evening, everybody. We've got one final match. We'll throw up a scoreboard and some statistics while we get this final lobby set up. But stay tuned. We've got $1,000 on the line here, and someone's going to be taking home an absolute bag. So stay tuned. We'll get that final lobby set up here in just a minute. GG's, everybody.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the fifth and final game of the evening. The main gaming weekly series $1,000 tournament is officially back on April 17th, along with the launch of our new website and our LLC. Um, this April 3rd event was an official test so we could get all of our ducks in a row before we officially come back on April 17th. But my gosh, Blitz, it's been an absolute honor to be back, excuse me, to be back watching the top con controller players on P uh, PUBG console with some new teams, some old teams all fragging it out. It's been an honor to be back here tonight. I'm so excited to get this series going again later on in the month. And we're dropping in on our final game of the evening here. Novo to George Pool Plane Path Blitz. What are you looking at? Tell me something. Oh man! First, I just want to say that uh, this whole thing has been awesome. I mean, I've I've been part of like many of the uh, console tournament stuff over the years, and the main gaming series that we've done over the past year or two, and especially the weekly series that we went into at the end of last year, has probably been some of the best content that I've seen personally. And I think also just as the game evolves, so many teams and so many players are so good at this point that the play is just on such another level. You know, as people people are so great, but as we play more and more and more, you just hone in those skills. And here we go. We're getting one of my favorite air and call zones for our last match. It's a little bit of a toxic zone, oh, but I love these mill to power gosh. finishes. And this one's including Novo. And really what I want to see is how do the Weasels play this last match? They've been playing pretty well, but last match they got eliminated a little early there um will we see txc or tsn finally come out with a dub main gaming's been right on the precipice precipice of getting to the end there as well might be a little late for them points wise but definitely want to see how weasels txc and tsn play out in this final match for sure yeah absolutely and i, and I gotta draw your attention to the zone over to milta and milta power ZG and the Weasels are hanging out right next to each other. These are our top two teams on the scoreboard wow. going into the final match. First place taking home $500. Second place taking home $300. Third place $150. Fourth place $50. We've got a fat prize pool here every Monday for you guys. And it's so interesting to see teams one and two hanging out right next to each other. This early game uh, rotation blitz getting these good power spots certain buildings here probably holding down the location that jolly already has i'd like to call that brown town just because everything's brown over there it's just um this is the time that that's really make or break for these squads because this zone is gonna pull off that water sooner than later and there are very specific spots along these roads along these compounds here that push up to the mountain that are very very advantageous and being here early they're going to be able to, to throw down some sort of a split whether that's a three to one split or a two one split with their squads. And it looks like genetics is already going to try to get prodigy and get moving to try to get one of these locations. I'm talking about. Yeah, Cause they have to watch out for Linka docs. He might already be scouting for a position here because there, there are so many compounds you can hold. He is scouting with the mini right now. He's got a four times. He's looking to see if anyone's open there. I think he might've just saw the weapon of Droppa there and is now turning back but yeah you're right they definitely need to split here but what two compounds do you split are they going to take the southern most, most compound and actually another kind of uh, fortune in their favor care pack is, is dropping right at the water by milta elsewhere i'm seeing um dub hub augie get into a fight with some of sob it's going to snap over to Blaine, there and see if we uh, can get, pole. yeah get some last game action it looks like augie is going to get that kill confirm it the rest of sob is hanging out in the apartments 
further to the west of these guys so they're going to get that kill and probably not see these guys for the rest um of this rotation they've got just about as long as you can along with ck ck is actually up there in zarki that's as far as you could have to rotate they've got a good 5,000 meters to drive blitz they're going to be in the car for 10 minutes that's where you need an emergency pickup which is coming into esports allegedly at some point this year but uh, i didn't not know that now that they are bringing all a lot of the items into esports this year that's part of uh, PUBG's mission is I, to I think that's going to be met with resistance but personally as someone who like plays more of the casual side of games I, I like that stuff so the only thing that like there's you're going to hear such reasonable arguments like people can take an airlift onto a mountain now like that just brings in such lame stuff so it'll be interesting to see what it's met with um, yeah. well, from I'm the comp I mean, side both change, on PC and console a, yeah, I mean, just a quick sidetrack. Part of the PUBG's roadmap for 2023, if people are here or listening, if you if you didn't hear that, there, there's a, been a lot of information, including revives coming into the game, all that stuff. But part of it is that they're trying to make the game esports more approachable for the casual players to like make it similar from casual to esports. So they're they're trying to make all that stuff a little bit more similar. So that that's part of that that roadmap for this year. But I get back to the gameplay here. Um, ZG looks like they just decided to stay put. Zodiac Gaming, that is. Crazy Mob is looking for position potentially towards this way. They might get shot up by ZG on this rotation. Depends where they end up here. Vigorous has ended up safely in the area, in zone. Got yeah, some Crazy rotation Mob starting to go down. Get Docs here. They're going to crash right at Link's Docs. Compound problems gets ripped out of the car from Link, but now we have a 3v1 with Link. Wow, this is going to be bad for Zodiac Gaming unless Linkadox can do something special here. You know he's capable of it, but it's phase takes him down. The rest of the team is gone, so he might have picked uh. up one kill for the squad, but he's out early. That's a big loss. Linkadox, I believe, serves as their IGL, so um, he'll have to focus extra hard for his squad here as he's going to go down. They are not going to be able to get this man up. The other three. Gonna be able They've to save him early in a, a couple of these times, matches. I, huh? I, guess, I guess he plays that position where he risks his life to go kind of, you know, in, in a split like this. But definitely risky early on to be in being a one uh, three split right there. Yeah, four men all in one car crashing him. He picked out one. He got a couple down to one shot. He, he, he almost he pulled that out. Health. Yeah, absolutely. He almost had three knocked on the pull up. And then, you know, he would have just went and taken that one v one. But it didn't work out for him. So GG is to link. But. Ooh. His team on, gonna... on the milt of power here. Bunch of teams rotating below prison, and CE is heading right towards TE. We might see some people get ripped out of the car. A lot of people getting shot out of the car at this point in the game. If you're driving by a, pers a good player, they just rip you right out of the car. Cracked right now, driving by. Goes down to half health. I think he's missing a tire too. Barely survives there, Stento. Yeah, I'm watching all of, of CE rotate here and unfortunately cracked tried to pull up in a little bit of a dip there He had no idea um, That Eno was up the hill Rotating a little bit on their own. Wow. So cracked is lost here. It looks like uh, mr. Monty tried to pull up onto brown town. He's lost as well I don't know how that happened frisky and feng chu still working their way over the woodyard hill up here So this squad just unfortunate a little bit of a, a sloppy rotation Meeting just too many teams, forcing them to just take too many different direction. Um, I am noticing he's in a fight right now on the opposite side of the map. Don't want to flip you too much, but no, I'm getting over there. Quavoff takes seven. down both of the members. Unfortunately, Boatman um, and Pride were up the hill. Uh, Team Toxic did a little bit of a, a common two-two split here. You see these garage houses taken both up and down, but. There's not much you can do when a four-man K7 crashes you. That's going to be two quick deaths every time. Wow. A big fight breaking out on top of the hill as well between RR and uh, Virtual Kings here, uh, Blitz. RR has been kind of sneaky hanging around late, so let's see how they handle this. They already lost a member, Wiz. Shanks is knocked. Going for the revive here. Tony just made on the push. Tony's always point man here pushing first. Illusion is also on the front lines as well. Gets knocked by Brody with good SLR shooting. Tony's gonna get a oh the nade from Illusion does get the double kill though. Wow, it's just Brody now trying to deal with Tony and sub. 
Brody did get the knock and thirst onto illusion. He's gonna switch the 3x off of the AK to a little bit of red dot spray, and Tony takes him down. This man can shoot. You saw Long the AK bouncing, spread. but he was able to manage it. Four kills for this squad. We've seen them doing some good fragging. I'm very anxious to to see some more play out of the virtual kings in tournaments moving forward. So big GGs to these guys taking down RR, a team we're very familiar with. Uh, but I, I love watching this Tony play, man. He is absolutely skilled, huh? Yeah, I mean, we've definitely had some awesome moments watching him make some big plays. And actually, uh, K7's making a push on BK, who are kind of refueling off the death boxes here. There's only two left, though. They start this game with only three members. Sub's going to go down. But yeah, Tony's a great player. I mean, we've seen him make huge plays. I feel like over the years. Wow, he backs Quave off off to literally one HP. So Tony might be able to get the revive off onto sub here, but K7 is a team that doesn't sit around, man. They're already getting active. They already got the push here. Qdex getting a different angle as Aimbot and Warhawk push up close. Warhawk taking the wide angle to, to, to try to get a little bit of a um of a of a northwestern angle on this, excuse me, not a southern side. Here's the driver, uh, passerby is going to be Augie on the bike. He doesn't pay it too much attention. He really did take this a little bit too wide. Yeah, ultimately, though, I mean, Tony might be able to get a knock here. And if they're out in the open, the flush. But when you're stuck in this wizard tower, there's really no way out. I mean, this would be a play for the ages if Tony was able to make a move here from this position. If there's anyone that that might be able to do it it might be this man he was leading our kills and leading our damage for a while tonight he cooled off a little bit because of our miramar round but 4k seven members all focused on this location i'm not sure he's going to have anything to do about this quavov has been using the the mutant with the new uh ttk is really insane so i love seeing players pick that up and use it in a competitive scene here the nade going out not going to connect these guys need to be careful here they don't want to lose one to tony here but they're exhausting absolutely everything they have and they've gotten no damage yet the nade only damages quave off actually it's amazing how much damage he hasn't taken yet tony gets the knock he's almost getting the flush there but they were able to yeah a good, him a good he got stack by k7 tony is a handful man he proves it time and again so gg to tony blitz this circle has not come off the water at all we're into phase two, circling into phase three, and half of the zone is water. Unbelievable. We might see a finish that's right on TSN here. That's a very common finish for this zone. It could pop up north to where Vigorous is, but commonly this does stay pretty far south here. Can't oh, Blitz, this big ends. fight breaking out zones. on the north side between TE and Eno. And there you go. Oh, wow. Eno is white. He pushed off their compound. He must have crashed. Yeah, I, didn't, there. I didn't see the beginning of this fight. I got into it last second. TE picks yeah, up four kills. across the street there. So they must have just sent it. GG's. Taking a quick look at the map. Still, again, so much water involved. A7 hanging up in the wood yard. Affinity. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing. It looks like they're going for a boat. So this is one of our top teams. Definitely still in contention for, um, if not the top prizes, uh, first place even. So... Omerta and Baby Joey have picked there, up Lepoka. three kills. They're in phase two, so this doesn't sting much. It's still only one HP in phase three. So they're going to be able to rotate all the way to the edge, and they're going to take advantage of this. They just need to be careful because SOB is hanging out on the coast. Yeah, that could be treacherous for them. Honestly, TXC Boat has like one of the best positions for this zone, but he's by himself, so he's not going to be able to hold it forever. SOB could be could eventually move in there. TSN could back out of the compound and go there as well. Yeah, options are Jer limited here for Boat. I mean, his perspective, he's on top. He actually got a knockdown below uh, onto TSN, but he, he can't push. He's a solo versus a full squad. He's just trying to figure out what, what to play for now. He might be best off on the coast would be my guess. Uh, but AFI is wrapping around that way. SOB is already on the coast uh, somewhere else, so... Options are limited for him as a weasels. solo here. If you're the Weasels, you have to be super happy here. They're a center zone. They have placed 2-2-1, two, two, but then got eliminated early on Miramar. So with another good finish here, they could definitely place within the money, potentially. Uh, so they just got to hold strong. Right now, we're going to see some chaos on the north side of the map. K7's pushing down. MG's stuck in a little bit of a dip here in between Vigorous, Ghosted, and K7. Also, Zodiac Gaming still here, situated. 
Yeah, I'm not sure really K7 has spot. any idea that that main gaming is hanging out underneath in Warhawk, playing very aggressive here. Wait, Quavoff is already in this compound. I did not see the Quavoff here. I I didn't see how that happened, but he needs help from his team and he needs it now because he's got all the Zodiac gaming all around him. Yeah, how did he get here unspotted? I have no idea. I didn't Zodiac see how this happened. Been zoned in elsewhere. <laughs> I have no idea how this happened, but. They just need to be careful trying to kill him because the entire team is watching from the north side on the hill. And main gaming is also close by and vigorous as well. So there is just so much going on here. Waveoff has switched buildings as he started to get pushed. <laughs> and again, he's got the mutant, which has the fastest time to kill out of any AR in the game. But again, you have to deal with that. The burst fire. Follow Warhawk Sam from the down. top Quavoff floor. Need takes to down Warhawk. Now. Aimbot is arriving to help out, but this is about to get real messy for two of our top teams. Ooh, ooh. Aimbot with a nice heady on Shambhala through the window there. He was hard peeking that. As soon as Shambhala peeked, he got him. Finally, Aimbot, Aimbot waiting for the backup here from Quavoff, leading the charge up the stairs. Aimbot trying a little bit of a peek. He's going to push up now. Quavoff right behind him here. Tactical takes him down. Quavoff is there with the time to kill. Mutant, as we were talking about, that thing is just devastating. My wow. goodness gracious. He's going to... And Quavoff has it down. Yeah, he, he's got some good spray with that mutant. Was able to get up and over the, the, the edge of the stairs there and quickly get the shots onto Tacticals before he got the thirst onto Aimbot. So a great team push there. They have one member left of ZG to deal with. This is our first place team. There are several teams that are within reach given a good chicken dinner or a solid game. Quavoff knows that his team needs to get active. K7 has had a small, small game here tonight. Wow. They have not played up to their normal standards. Quavoff did not know Paula Sam was waiting there. So every point matters with here for Paula Sam and this team. He's half health. Team's gonna be pushing him here and try to get him out potentially, or maybe not. He's got the shotgun. They might hold off. At this yeah, point, what do you do? If they're if looting you're for throwables K7. and stuff, you like this is the first place team. K7, for for lack of better words, might have nothing to lose here. They might need to full send this, get this kill, and then look for more kills if they want to end up in the top three right now. So that is probably what is on their mind right now, trying to figure out how to deal with this member final member. I'm um, gonna just slide right down the block because Vigorous is defending their compound versus MG right now. It's gonna be Prodigy now versus uh, Exodia. Wow, and this is uh, kind of the secondary spot I thought the zone would go to. It's shifted up here this way. So they're fighting for a good position in zone here, Exodia. Down to no help, gets knocked, acid burn across the street with the M249. Not gonna be able to help out here. Vigorous Prodigy is down though. But Asperger, again, can't capitalize from across the street there. Unfortunate situation, but she's still alive and the team can still get some points, which is good. Yep, we're down to our final 12 teams. So we, we still have a good, a good amount of players alive, 31. Um, and lots of teams centered up already. This has just been a, re a real messy fight between uh, Zodiac Gaming and K7 we were watching. And in this battle that main gaming was in a dip for a while with Vigorous. So we've seen a lot of teams kind of stuck in their locations for a while. AFI, in the meantime, has taken hey, their boat it. all the way around. They, they're on foot here, though, Blitz, and they're going to be really met with resistance. And that's our second one of our top teams already taken down a chicken dinner yeah. today, the console killers. I'm but very interested to see if AFI can get off of this edge. Shout out to Baby Joey with six freaking smokes. I think he had eight and just threw two. Uh, so he might give his team a chance if they, they make a good enough smoke wall. But it looks like they're deciding to actually run back to the beach instead of smoke wall and push CK, which could be the good move here. Yeah, I like this play. Baby Joey already has three kills. These guys are one of the teams who can definitely catch first place. So they need to be careful. They need to try to keep four strong. They need to conserve their their util. Again, just like you said, they might need six smokes to push into a certain location on the edge here. They are reduced to just their Lambo feedies here. They took a boat to this edge, and they've got no vehicle 
to work with. So God, this is a, such a tough spot to be in. Zones yeah, coming in here. TSN. You know they're gonna get spotted by the Wizard Tower as soon as they cross into the open area here. From uh, TSN did a split. Is TSN still four strong here? Yes, they, they are. are. Zero kills. <gasps> they have a split on the Wizard Tower. The TSN aren't gonna be spotting much right now because Jolly just took one of them wow. down. Wizard Tower is fully occupied now on the res. I don't think you're gonna see the Weasels move out of that compound. They're in a very good spot still. So. Nothing much can happen. The TSN squad has got a little bit of a 2-2 split. And now it's time for AFI. They're getting shot at long range from the other two members of TSN. And the further they push to the right is going to reopen the line of sight for CK. All members need to heal up, boost up, and they need to make a coordinated push with their smokes here if they're going to make a push towards the top side of this leaderboard. Sure, you know, something I'm really confused about is that TSN took their car to the wizard tower. So now Psy and the other member don't have a car. Just a weird move on their part to, to leave them a carless, unless I'm missing something here. They are getting a care package right to TSN. But, you know, sometimes people bail on their car. And I know it's easy to shoot people out of the car at this point in the game, but also at this level of play, you almost need a car to ensure that you can rotate, right? Uh, so it's, it's it's kind of surprising to me some teams just not even uh, focusing on, on having a car. We, we saw multiple teams tonight get screwed because they didn't have a vehicle. Yeah, AFI is going to need to choose a TSN or console killers to push, Ooh, I believe. This out. TXE boat is it made it into the compound behind Psy. There's no way they would think that someone's coming in from this angle. So even though they have a good smoke wall, Boat might be able to literally follow them in this smoke wall if he's aggressive enough. He is. He's heading in the back smoke center. I'm sure you're catching this. This is legendary. Yep, absolutely. Three smokes for him. If he's really greedy, he might go to his care package. Or does he go for the flush here? Gonna pick up yeah, two kills for kill. TXC. That's big pit points. We know they're in the top couple teams as well. They had a rough round on Miramar last game, but oh, it's oh, the third jolly. party. Weasel's picking up some valuable kills here. Probably a little angry at Boatman for stealing his kills, but some really sneaky plays wow. from Boatman to survive, Very pick up some sneaky. extra points. He might sneak his team into the top couple teams and take home some point, uh, some some prize money tonight. So just a little recap, everybody. We are 10 teams alive, 21 min minutes into this. K7 is still alive. AFI is still Sam alive, too, alive. Blitz. It's I'm... Hollow Sam and, and K7 both made it out of that compound. How did that happen? That's, we I missed have that. That's crazy. I have no idea. Every point matters for Zodiac Gaming. Every point matters for several teams here tonight. If we took a look at the scoreboard, there is like three or four teams that are in reach with uh, of that first place team. So... We need to keep an eye on AFI, TSN. We need to keep an, uh, an eye on... Yeah. AFI is moving across the, the street. Weasels watching Baby obviously Joey right have been now. in second place all night. So there's, there's several teams that are still within the first place uh, reach here. Absolutely. This is a great final game. It's a lot of people in contention right now, which is what you want to see. Uh, AFI, Muerta goes down tough situation now they got smoke still but they're running out of smokes there is just goes nowhere down. for them to go here. here zelody and baby joey need to keep pushing through try to take away some of the angles that some of these teams have but zelody just oh, but there's just too many sob SOB is already in the location that they probably needed to get to sob is in a very good spot there baby joey is gonna need to do something special here to get in the zone this is just too tough Wow, Weasel's pushed out to get the two kills in the Wizard Tower. And I wonder if AFI is going to regret going for that boat rotation. I mean, it might have been their only option, but now they're just down to Baby Joe, and he gets eliminated. Another kill from the Weasels there, picking that up. So they just kind of weaseled their way and stole four, uh, a couple kills there. They went from one to four kills. Yeah, I didn't know what C pulled CK out of Brown Town over to this ridge, but they've got two knocks ready. It's just one member left. Coma needs to make something happen. He does. A smoke was going to come out from SOB, but he needed to be ready for the push there. CK playing this aggressive. They've got just three players up, but they've already got five kills. CK again is another team that's in contention. They've already got a chicken dinner here tonight. So we need to keep an eye on this squad as well. The Weasels just to the south. I think are our second place team already having a decent round. Still four deep, but there are so many different 
uh broken teams in different locations here blitz that the weasels are going to need to be careful with this rotation they're on the south side of zone very split right now so we want to see them keep a four man strong if they're going to push uh the top of the leaderboard if they're going to catch paulo sam and zodiac gaming who is still involved in this game they've picked up five kills already so they're on pace with the weasels right now but Follow Sam, just a solo, gonna have to outlast the four man of the Weasels here, and that is our top two teams. So, lots to keep an eye on here, Blitz. Wow, again, Sento, I'm just amazed that all of these final zones have really left all the compounds. Normally, we'll see, you know, like a city finish or one compound BOP the whole time. Uh, I mean, obviously, there are a few buildings left, but I think the zone's ultimately gonna finish with no buildings in it and uh it's just interesting to see that in case heaven's making a push across the street acid burn hiding behind this truck k7 yeah i don't think they ever spotted her there oh this is unbelievable acid burn is hanging back the two members left for k7 aimbot and qdex are pushing through the smoke they've got to meet paulo sam at this compound and there's a two man of the crazy mob that are ringing out shots into the smoke as they push across so there's just a whole lot going on nades are coming out from multiple third parties now te down the street is starting to ring out shots just paulo like that sam. paulo sam with a shoddy pops one pops two wow. takes them both down these kills are so valuable for zg at the top of the leaderboard it, trying to stay in position yup getting more points every time a team <laughs> drops out Two more kills to Apollo Sam with the shoddy. His new best friend might be putting home, uh, might be putting $500 in his pocket for those plays alone right wow, there. Wow, honestly, talk about home defense, dude. He just held that house down with the shotgun. That, that was unbelievable, man. And K7 has to be kicking themselves over that one. That was probably frustrating for them to be in that situation. It was crazy. Quavop found himself down in ZG's compound all alone. And the team tried to join up and they just kind of couldn't get off that hill and it, it turned into a crazy battle where k7 had the the edge there but paulo sam just held strong with the shotgun and made some place man that individual type of stuff doesn't go unnoticed he probably just held on to first place for his squad with those shotgun plays for sure i mean that that, that is actually crazy when you think about it that they might have just held on the to the weasels big prize pushed pool on to ck quickly In dropped two, three two of them split, right? i think the weagles the, excuse me the weagles i think the weasels saw the the play in the kill feed from paulo sam and said we need to get aggressive if we're going to take first place we need to get some more kills they push up kill ck take down three more kills as just two man they left their other two teammates drop it in genetics back there a care package dropping in the center of zone and this is a wide open finish if you take a look above from the, the the angle from your camera blitz if you just kind of go up into the air that care package is basically center zone from our next zone nobody is going to have any cover if they get out into this field so people are going to be clinging on to edge for as long as they can there's a couple of hills some knolls with some trees and, and all of these vehicles excuse me vehicles these houses are, are really getting pulled out here soon so te is going to meet the likes of acid burn and paulo sam and crazy mob are all going to clash on this edge of zone here as the weasels are just there to clean it up they do just that prodigy takes down acid burn she was crawling across the street to try to sneak up on paulo sam here and gets literally killed by the weasels another point for them they're getting close to 10 kills crazy mob's going to try to take out paulo sam it's going to be the second team to try and get him out of this building but actually Oh my oh, gosh, Paulo Weasels Sam. Continuing there you a go. Big push. Paulo Sam gets taken down by the grenade. He does get another kill. kill each Crazy kill Mob is out. It's it's TE versus the Weasels. This is all the Weasels now. They need to pick up all these kills and this chicken dinner to have wow. a chance at the first place that Zodiac Gaming is hanging on to. Orch was tagging up Droppa. <laughs> Genetics pulls up with the mini and just drops him. Jolly with a big rotation Jolly with here. a big rotation. And now... He's gonna go down jolly with the last two kills and he deserves it because i heard in the chat that he's the ideal of the squad making the big plays big plays with a big comeback after getting eliminated early on miramar <laughs> so they have second place second place first and then in the last match another first for the weasels and how many kills did they end up with there they ended Is up with 12? 12 12 in the chicken dinner we're seeing te team excessive takedown six in the second and rounding out our top three, Paulo Sam got his team up to eight kills and top three. He might have done enough. I'm going to switch us to our two cam intermission here. Oh, I actually lost. Oh, there you are. Lost you for a sec. But 
Hell, nice wave to the people blitz <laughs> god it feels good to be back main gaming weekly yeah, series does, does. this is a, a a test run ladies and gentlemen um we have some some things to iron out and and some things to work out on the back end on the business side but um it's such an honor to be to be representing main gaming and in pubg console we have so many big ideas and so many big events um coming very soon as i've been saying all night april 17th marks the launch um of our llc our new website will be available and there'll be a ton of features there that are going to benefit everyone in the PUBG console scene so i'm very excited for the future and i'm just honored to be a part of it um and i'm honored to be a, a part of uh you know competitive gaming it's such an honor to watch these guys uh zodiac gaming the weasels um so many more teams the dub hub several others that we've just talked about all night vigorous it's so much fun to watch these top competitors come back um, and as we continue to get some consistency to our events here, Blitz, I'm just so excited to see more and more players, more and more teams get involved. I, I want to stress it. I've been saying it all night. All of these events are free to join. They're welcome to anybody in the community. If you have any questions at all, please find myself. I stream every day. My teammate Blitz here, co-host, is always available streaming every day. We've got several moderators in the chat you can feel free to reach out to. Feel free to reach out to any of the main gaming team in the Discord or on Twitter. Um, and we'd love to answer any questions you have about PUBG console or the future for the squad. Um, we've got so much planned, and I'm just very excited to, to share it with you guys. But um, an impressive, impressive showing by Zodiac Gaming, the Weasels, and several others here, Blitz. Um, what's something that, that stood out to you from the night before we say goodbye to everybody here? Well, again, I mean, there's been a lot of great games over the history of the main gaming events but this was another great one where so many no, not one team ran away with it and before we saw some games where when quave off and a few good players got on a team together they would really run away with it and uh that was not the case today at all and there was a lot of stack teams and even some of the new teams were really playing well uh so that's just really exciting to show that like it's not just a bunch of new teams here and there's just craziness everywhere there's still a lot of veteran teams the competition was really fierce and uh it's fun to see people are still like you said the registration was so quick people are still interested in this stuff and i think you know uh main gaming is filling the void there and uh, i was just awesome to see everybody frag out a lot of good games and uh good sportsmanship from everybody so i appreciate that yeah ma massive shout out to to all the players and the teams participating as blitz said these registrations go really fast but um the goal of all these events are to get more players new players new teams involved so if you are a new player, a new team, we always prioritize brand new teams and brand new players getting into these events. So please, um, if you aren't following the main gaming Twitter, that is where we uh, announce these events. Again, they're, they're welcome to everybody. So if you, if you need to get up to speed on how everything works, eventually we're going to be registering through our new website. Um, and then there's just a lot to look forward to in this future. So, um, Make sure you're checking out all of our players. Lots of these players are live right now. Everyone is uh, required to be um, at least one team. Uh, excuse, excuse me. At least one person from every team is required to be live. Um, so we're going to work on finding ways to direct you guys to these streams so you can watch these teams, um, watch these organizations compete because um, we're just dedicated to helping everyone grow in this scene. Um, that might be it, Blitz. Five matches went by a little bit faster than I thought they were. But that was yeah. a lot of fun. We'll have to um, see what the scoreboard says as we sign off here. And um, as always, it takes us about a day or two to send out these winnings. But a massive shout out to everyone in the chat. We can't thank you enough for, for showing love. Um, and, and Main Gaming's got a lot more for PUBG console. And um, I'm very excited for the future here. Sure. It, obviously, T-Wire takes a little bit to update. So I guess we'll have the information in the Discord and also probably tweet it out um, after the fact or maybe tomorrow, the final results for the event. Uh, I'm really curious to see how this plays out. I just feel like so many teams were kind of vying for the top five teams and the money spots there as well. So I, I'm really excited to see the final list when that updates. Yeah, absolutely. But that does it for us here, ladies and gentlemen. We'll pull up the scoreboard as we sign off. But Blitz, that's it. Ladies and GGs, gentlemen, thanks, thank man. you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for tuning in. And make sure you guys are following uh, Main Gaming on all the socials and Discord for all the latest events and information. Absolutely. Night, we'll be back with our next Main Gaming Weekly on April 17th. Peace out, everybody.